just kind of naturally started in this pose for this recording so it's a thing now this is how i'm starting the episode hello everyone it's weekly manga recap it's august 30th of 2023 and we're back uh we uh, i know that uh we did a q a episode a couple of weeks ago but we haven't had a proper recap recap discussion uh episode in almost an entire month at this point coming up uh, close so we, yeah we're we got some stuff to talk about or got double chapters on almost everything, and uh, it's going to be a thing. Uh, I should also note that there was a possibility that we would have had to make up three <laughs> chapters uh, because a hurricane hit Florida again. Um, but fortunately, uh, the area that I live in, in the Tampa area, did not <laughs> suffer the brunt of it. I wish all the best of luck. And well wishes, and I hope you all stay safe if you are in the path of Hurricane Idalia, uh, as well as, I mean, the other storms that are also brewing in the area. It happens every goddamn summer, but uh, uh, so, you know, stay safe, don't be stupid, and I know some of you aren't going to listen to me, because, you know, I'm mostly directing that message to Floridians, and they don't <laughs> take that advice. But yeah, you, have a, you have a good, maybe, like a 50-50 shot of it happening, you know? Yeah, it should be more than I, that. <laughs> I think if they're listening to Weekly Manga Recap, they're more inclined statistically to listen to you. Like, yeah. if we did a, a Weekly Manga Recap poll of Floridians, they, they'd mostly be on board with what you're you're putting down. Yeah. Also, it can't be a huge Venn diagram. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, Nick. Uh, I have a story about uh, impressions and how sometimes they're wrong. So, okay. uh, recently... Uh, I should also clarify, I was sick last week with COVID, so if my voice my voice sounds a little weird or I start coughing, uh, that's probably why I am now good, I'm cleared, I'm negative of COVID, but after I have it, like, anytime I get sick, I just have a cough for a while, so. Absolutely. Heads yeah. up on that. Uh, but before I got COVID, uh, we went on a small trip, uh, me and my two roommates, to go visit a friend of ours, you know, uh, Little Dan, who lives in uh, New Jersey. We were all deciding that we were going to go to this thing called the Oddities Festival. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they were going to meet us in Philadelphia because it was at the it was a Philadelphia convention. So, all three of us have collectively agreed not to place blame about this to anybody. <laughs> This is a great start. Uh. But at some point, one of us assumed it's a convention in Philadelphia. It'll be at the Philadelphia Convention Center. And no one checked. Nobody double-checked that. We headed off to Philadelphia to get to the Philadelphia Convention Center. It's the Convention Center in Philadelphia, Nick. Right. What? Like, come on. Like, it, it's pretty clear-cut. So we we get to the Convention Center... And I'm texting Little Dan, and one of the first things I text him is like, hey, we just parked in the parking garage, we're headed in. And this is one of those things that should have tipped me off. He's like, I didn't know there was a parking garage, but right. all right, fair enough, we'll see you guys soon. Right. Yeah, for a convention center, you assume, even if you didn't see one, that it's like, maybe there was one on the other side of the building. Yeah, or whatever. something yeah. like that. Uh, there was also a bit of an oddity, too, when he's like, oh, hey, uh, just let us know when you guys are going to get there, because we only live like 10 minutes from the convention center. And I was like, 10 minutes from... Philadelphia right. Convention Center is interesting, but maybe that's like an overestimate, you know, or maybe they do live in the city or whatever. Right. So we're heading over to this uh, convention center. And so the Oddities Festival, I should explain, is like essentially a place where there's a lot of like taxidermy. There's a lot of like paintings of gothic stuff, um, just like weird kind of out there stuff. Uh, and there's an audience you would expect for that. I don't know yeah. what you're picturing in your head, but you're probably My right. Wife. What's up? My wife. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was expecting a lot of, like, goths, a lot of alts. Uh, just, like, aesthetically, you're, like, people here, like, yeah, yes, you are headed to the Oddities Expo. This makes oh, sense. Oh, no. <laughs> As we're heading to the Oddities Expo, we're, like, sure, a lot of people in, like, polo shirts and, like, 
khaki slacks walking around like they got places to go. But you know what? And they're all walking, you know, with doing the elbow walk. As yeah. They go, doo, 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 doo. But we can see that there's a sign for like a uh, like a sociology expo or something like that going on. And I've been at this convention center before. They have multiple conventions at the same time. This is the same right. one where yeah. I, I played a Magic the Gathering tournament. Well, there was also like a juniors cheerleader tournament going on. Like they sometimes have those right. things. So I was like, we probably just have a smaller venue, whatever. Uh, and we find it, and it, it's worth noting, everyone outside of this room, again, they they looked like they belonged to a particular group that is not the goths and alts that I expected to attend this convention. We find Hall D, and that's what we're supposed to be, is Hall D. It's what it says so you on had, the So you had the right hall. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's the wrong building. Well, we don't know that yet. <laughs> But yes, uh, we just go, we're like, Hall D, that's where it's held. Hall D, that's what this is called, Hall D. So we go to the security guard. This security guard could not give less of a shit about anything. Of course. We're like, hey, is this the Oddities Expo? And he's like, sure thing. And just points us straight in. Okay, that's not your fault. <laughs> this that was, is none this of your guys' not fault. Our fault. So we're like, all right, let's get it. And the entire time we're having difficulties contacting uh, our friend because we're like, I, like I'm trying oh, yeah, to find you, but I'm not. Like you said, you're outside of Hall D. We're outside I mean, of Hall you know, D. But once, once you know, you go to the other side of the planet, then service starts to break up, and that's where the convention actually was. <laughs> so we open the door to this convention center, Nick. <laughs> And I, I can't stress Expecting to it. see a bunch of people with spite collars and veils and stuff. There was like 10,000 people and every single one of them was wearing a hijab. Like everyone is clearly Muslim. As we walk in and we're like, I don't think this is the oddities I You were mentioning people in polos. I thought you were just going to show up and there was the, the entire convention hall was just going to be like a free-for-all <laughs> squash match or something like that. No, I mean, it was... <coughs> as I said, like there was like a sociology expo going on, which I assume that's the group, but everyone outside of the convention right. hall was also like clearly like, you know, Middle Eastern Muslim, like, uh, like very clearly like this is like a collective, like this is what the convention is about. But there was just right. a moment where like... Oh, maybe like a bus, you know, showed up, like a community got together and purchased it and came together and they're just all outside or whatever. I don't know, but it's the moment you open the door and everyone is clearly for this specific convention that you're like, this isn't the Audis Expo. And that's where we came to realize that the Audis Expo was not at the Philadelphia Convention Center. It was right. instead held at the Greater Philadelphia Expo. A location an hour away. Yay! So it, it, it's worth noting, we were already late. <laughs> like, if the destination was supposed to be the Philadelphia Convention if the Center... Place had, if the place had been next door, you would have still been like, <laughs> shit, we're gonna be late. <laughs> if the location was exactly where we went, we still were very late. <laughs> and then uh, having to sheepishly call and be like, there were three adults in his house, and no one double checked the address. We'll see you in an hour. Oh man! So an hour later, we got to the expo. Uh, I almost picked up Free Willy two trading cards, but decided to hold off, and uh, we all had a great time. So I got this collar. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> yeah, that. the I... end of the story is we had a great time. Uh, I'm, I'm the I'm moral. <laughs> I'm just a little bit caught up on the Free Willy 2 trading cards. That's, that's what really enchanted me. Not Free Willy 1. Those were right. not available. Free Willy 2. A movie I must have been like nine years old for and still didn't see. So that had to tell you like what the quality of this that stinker was. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a third one. I remember that there was a third one. I don't think I ever even watched it on video. I can't imagine what they're about. How many times do you need to free the whale? I don't know. Um, I think that the that there are these people who keep on kidnapping them in order to shoot movies about them. So yeah. Yeah, I guess it's this kind of a you know a perpetual motion machine kind of thing. It's I've... like we keep on making the movie about freeing the whale, and we have to capture the whale. So then we just have a new topic for the next movie about the people who capture the whale. 
So eventually, there's just going to be a meta movie about capturing whales to film Free Willy Four, and the end of the movie is them actually releasing them into the wild and then burning the film. And you're just like, how did I watch? How am I watching movie this? <laughs> And then the so and then like the director of the movie is like in your living room and says, "Films, movies aren't shot on film anymore, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you're an you're a big dumb idiot." I'm like, "All right, well, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt here. I don't know, maybe this is like Oppenheimer. You filmed it on like, you might have been some Nolan shit going on here." You're you're like I'm the person. I'm just the person who watched Free Willy Four. You're the person who made it. So who's the yeah really <laughs> yeah who's the asshole here? <laughs> Fucking it's Patty a- Jenkins. <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh i could tell you all however that if you're here to listen to two idiots talk about manga then you are in the right place yeah. you're not in the wrong convention center and we have so much manga to talk about uh, so i'm just gonna roll into it with the mercifully short to begin with my Hero Academia chapters. Uh, first off is chapter 397, Trash Cleanup. All Might is continuing to use all of his support items and his kind of makeshift Iron Man suit, which uh, kind of has mimics of a bunch of Class 1A's abilities uh, programmed into it to fight all for one. Uh, he starts off with a pretty sick burn, which is, this feels wrong. Here I am, I'm past, I'm past the age of 50 and I'm being the tar out of a helpless lad. A real demon door would be a gas getting your ass kicked by a, a corkless man like this. So, <laughs> it's like, pretty good trash talk. Uh, and yeah, he's just punching him over and over again. All for one does some sort of makeshift com- quirk combine ability to unleash a wave of power. Uh, it breaks or, or fractures some of All Might's bones, but he's got the support suit on and so it's continuing to help him to move. Uh, and, uh, all for one says, you know, you've lost all perspective because you're just using gadgets and what they're gone once I break them because they can't go beyond their own limits. Ah, see, because ah. It's, they can't plus ultra because, you know. But clearly, he's never watched that one episode of Teen Titans where Cyborg goes above 100% capacity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which was... You know, a thing that happened. Uh, <laughs> There's so many little things about Cyborg that I've really come to appreciate from like a far uh, vantage point like the one that always gets memed on a lot is the you know the, the of course i understand discrimination i'm, I'm part robot or whatever right. you know but really also the notion that he defeats brother brother blood by being like i'm part human and robot and like starts repairing himself you know like I don't, I don't quite understand what's happening here this this really does feel like magic is is occurring uh-huh. But you know, why have I lost my sound? Oh, can you hear me? Uh, hang on, let me just try and rejoin the call because I've I can't hear you right now. Okay, so be right. Can the audience hear me? That's an important question. I'm up in Nick's box now. Okay, you can hear me. All good. All good. Okay, cool. I fixed it. Anyway, cyborg, weird character. Great character though. Love cyborg. It was great that he, that you know they end that episode with Beast Boy asking him, "So are you magic now?" And he says, "I think that was just a one-time thing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm. <laughs> "All right." <laughs> this sounds like some nonsense, but this sounds like a literal Deus Ex Machina, you, honestly. So. You did give me Slade, so I'm willing to forgive a lot. <laughs> oh, I don't care how you beat Brother Blood. We're done with him. All right, <laughs> he sucked. Uh, anyway. Uh, all Might uh, d- flashes back from that moment to seemingly the moment that he met Nanashimura uh, when he <laughs> apparently tried to take down some villains with a pipe and uh, she beat them up with, you know, her actual superpowers and stuff. And it was like, really, kid? What are you trying to do here? And uh, we put back from there to more trash talk at the end of the chapter. Leads into the next chapter, 398. Toshinori Yagi. Rising slash origin, because I guess like you couldn't. I don't know if they're gonna keep on doing one of those and not the other, but it seems like you couldn't decide on a title. There, it's like it's the rising and the origin. Like, all right. Yeah. Well, it's giving like references to both. You know, like Bat- Dark Knight Rising, which isn't the name of the movie, but maybe you just saw it real right. quick. And then, of course, everyone's favorite comic book movie. Wolverine X-Men Origin. 
<laughs> so it's like a reference to both of them. I get a little bit of safety. Feels like a safe bet that that is literally everyone's favorite comic book movie. I don't know anyone who it isn't. So, anecdotally, yeah. I mean, that movie is genius. You know, the uh-huh. way that it has has Deadpool, and then at the time he becomes Deadpool, his mouth literally is fused shut, so he can't talk. Uh, and yeah. how it, and how one of the characters in it is played by Will I Am of the Black Eyed Peas. Every <laughs> every decision is good. They have Gambit. I mean, here's the thing. If you were to grade X-Men movies based on the, the amount of Gambit that's in it, it's far and away the top pick. It's number one. You can't... None of the other ones come close. Yeah. They're not even on the scale. Yeah. Sorry, that Channing Tatum vehicle's not happening, guys. It's not gonna happen. Man, my sister held on hope for that for a real yeah. long time and just kept asking me, when are they doing it? When is it happening? And I just kept having to break the news to her over and over again. I'm like, I don't think it's happening a lot of promises were made but much like the dark universe this is not coming to fruition something something marvel bought (laughs) bought everything (laughs) sorry marvel disney bought everything (laughs) anyway uh the next chapter opens up with again a flashback with all might and nana shimura he's just his quirkless high school ass self going let me be your pupil while she just walks away from him instead of flying off i i guess she's I guess even at the beginning, she's like, I don't know, I guess I'll actually hear this guy out, because she could just literally fly away, but whatever. Um, We get more support items coming out to help out All Might, uh, including one that literally shoots a missile that he grabs and stabs into All for One's stomach and injects him with acid, which, that's pretty great. Uh Uh-huh. Uh... And uh, then we get more into properly, like, the first encounter between Nana and uh, Toshinori. And uh, Toshinori's like, hey, let me help you. And she's like, no, you're... I've, got, I've got, like, important stuff to do. Go defend a three-meter radius with that freaking lead pipe. And he says, my family was killed a while back. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> a whole lot of dead but, people. Yeah. You'd say it's almost a requirement for all for one, but Deku's like, nah, my family's all still here. <laughs> I got, I what, got... about your di- what about your dad? Uh, he's somewhere. Uh, he's <laughs> around. He's not not here. I'm pretty sure he's not here, Deku. <laughs> no, I've been drawing him on my hand every day, so he's always with me. Hi, Deku! Hi, you, Deku! <laughs> Come give your dad to bring kiss, Dad! I don't want to, I'm probably friend. Now, son! You're not too old to give your hand a big search, right? Dad, please, this is very inappropriate. I will let you know what's inappropriate for my son. Oh, I guess I can put up with you, Dad. Oh, that's right. Your dad knows best. Now go take a bath. No! (laughs) I'll kill you, Dad. Oh man, this all makes sense. That's why Shigaraki's got his hand on his face. He's like, Dad, you can't tell me what to do anymore. Oh, it's parallels. <laughs> it's like poetry and rhymes. Rhymes. <laughs> uh, so Toshinori says, "Like, look, I can't accept the way the world things are in this world, where those who take from others come out on top, and then those who have had everything stolen, their grief turns into hatred. It's an endless spiraling cycle." And so Nana, clearly in a tone of like, "Oh yeah, yeah, what, so you've thought about this all poetically and stuff. All right, what are you gonna fucking do about it?" But she turns to look at him, and what she sees surprises her. Uh, and continuing from there, All Might got it all figured out. Basically, he's like, "The world needs a symbol, a symbol of peace." Because even with all these, you know, new buildings that are made, all these restoration efforts, people have been living in fear for so long. Their hearts and minds are shrouded in darkness. Everyone's got a tough enough time with their own three-foot radius. So, yeah, I'd step up. A quirkless guy like me has no role otherwise. So, it's a weird, like, an actual humble brag kind of thing. Like, yes, I'll be the symbol that people look up to, but it's certainly because, like, because I'm otherwise useless. Mm-hmm. Interesting way of looking at it. In the present, uh, All Might goes through a building. Uh, and not of his own volition, he gets knocked through it and bounces. Uh, and then flies to another building and rolls along the ground and eventually hits a barrier. So he's doing great uh, because this is a thing that, you know, people go through all the time. Getting slapped through buildings and thrown across streets and stuff. 
Uh, his uh, armor r- reports that he's got lots of fractures and contusions and a respiratory malfunction. No, no, no. That was there already. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, he thinks about how, you know, like, look, I used to be brimming with youth as well. And he remembers back when Deku was quirkless, rushing forward to try and save Bakugo from the uh, slime criminal guy. Uh, and he then remembers what Stain said to him when they met up a little while back. The man we knew as All Might could not live his life any other way. So even though he's broken, uh, with the help of the support armor, he stands up and like the armor is like squealing and screeching as it kind of helps move his joints for him. But as he looks up at all for one, you realize like he he looks like he's like even younger now. Maybe because he took the damage from Peaky's super acid, and so when it regenerated, it put even more stress on him, and it forced his rewind to go even further. Uh, and then he starts to laugh, big belly laugh, big "I am All Might" ha 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 laugh, and all sorts of images and moments from his life, specifically his time with Deku flash through his mind all the instruction he's been able to pass on and give to his his uh his student and he calls out to hercules to send more support for him and he just thinks to himself as he's getting ready for the next part of the fight possibly the last part of the fight to be of service to others what a joy fight on together and uh he gets all sorts of extra arms and cannons and stuff put on his body uh, which he declares come from uh, Uravity and Ingenium. Uh, so he's apparently going to fly and move really fast. Uh, and uh, he goes after All for One. And uh, in that moment, we get this big, across two pages, four panel split of the two big confrontations taking place between Deku and Shigaraki and All for One and All Might. And. Uh, all Might's still laughing. He's spitting out blood. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I'm I'm expecting we're going to get the uh, the sort of turnabout next chapter. Because uh, even though every chapter has kind of been like All Might gets his ass kicked, <laughs> it's also been like optimistic. Like the end of it's yeah. just like he is succeeding in delaying this guy. I'm waiting for like there's just like a real like kid boo ass moment. Where mm-hmm. all for one, just like DH to, to that point, just like as a kid, but just kicks the shit out of him and kind of ends it or something like that. Right. Um, but they might still have it be like, he's so young now. He's like past the point of prime. <laughs> like he's he's gone too far back in that, you know, Benjamin Button scenario or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it definitely feels like all Might's gonna die now because we had the big flash, you know, like, oh, all my memories with my prize student moment happen. It feels like, oh, I don't know if he's gonna make it through this, guys. Uh, But if that is the case, (laughs) jeez, he's going out like a badass. Uh, Yeah, I I feel as though he is not going to get uh, a living ending, but I don't think it'll be a bad ending. Because right now, Deku can still see all of his mentors in his mind. So I think that's his, that, that's our opportunity to get like a farewell to him or something like that. Possibly. All right, Nick. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Undead and Luck. We have two chapters to talk about. First being 171, So I Will. Uh, and we get a nice color page of most of like the kid gang at school looking at the window when it's snowy out, and we see uh, Nico and Ichika, uh, Ichigo like sitting outside shivering. They're like, "Holy shit, it's so goddamn cold!" Yeah, uh, but I gotta smoke. Uh. <laughs> uh, so we open with uh, Chikara, who's like, "Hey, I'm taking a picture of everybody." Uh, but he, he deliberately, like, uh, like, he vibrates while he does it because he's like, if I move, then my unmove won't activate. Uh, and they're like, don't you want your unmove? To-? Like, Sean's the one who asks, like, would you want your unmove to activate, like, as a photographer? And Gina's like, ugh, you're such an idiot, Sean, who also closed his eyes during the picture so he was invisible right. anyway. And they're like, no, he doesn't want to capture people with unmove. He wants to capture the moment of life with his camera. Uh, when... And that's when, like, 
uh, Fuko comes in, she's like, yes, which is why I have asked Nico to develop a stabilizer for your camera, basically. So, like, you can shake as much as you want, but this device will stabilize your camera to make sure your pictures don't come out blurry. Uh, and they don't, like, it's actually more expensive to do this than just invent a new camera. Uh, but, you know, it, it, you know, you seemed... You seem to want it, and Fuko. Yeah, he wanted to use his. He wanted to use his parents' camera yeah. for it. And Fuko started the effort to make this happen way back when they first met. So, like immediately, she was like, "I know this guy's going to need this camera." Uh, it works. He see, takes a picture, and Sean <laughs> finally figures out, like, "I'll close one eye and open the other, then I finally don't turn invisible." So, good moment, all that. Shigara does ask, so he's like, "Why do you go through all this for me?" Like. You've saved my life. You've given me all so much. And, like, I haven't been able to give anything back to you. And Fuko's like, you've actually given a lot to me because I've never been able to have a school life before. You know, I've always dreamed of it, but it was always too dangerous. But you've given me an opportunity and you've given me all these great memories. So, you know, that's more than enough. But, hey, if you want to give me something, give me a great grad picture at graduation tomorrow. I'm like, okay, absolutely, that's what we're gonna do. Um, there's like a scene where he briefly causes unmove on his parents because he just like spaces out essentially, yeah, just um, staring into space, and so they're caught mid bite, at yeah, dinner. it's good stuff. Uh, but his parents basically are just like, hey, look, you're like, you don't owe us anything, you don't have a path that you have to follow in your life, just you know, live your life, repay us, continue to live happily. That's kind of what they said, everything like that. So we kind of end this like scene with Fuko watching from outside. She's like, bedtime's achieved. Looks like this last day is going well. It's all good. And then she gets like a report, like you got to return to base. And the next day, Chikara is at graduation. And he's just going around. He's like, hey, where's Izumo? She's not here. In fact, like the principal's not here. And none of the other students, like what's going on? And his friend who we find out, I think later is Rio. I don't know. We might also find it out in here somewhere. His name's Rio. He's very important. It's like, who are you talking about? And that's when Jakar remembers that Fuko was like, yeah, we kind of messed with everyone's memory to like infiltrate your school. And he's like, fuck, they un <laughs> they unfucked with memory. They, they, they unfucked. <laughs> they erased themselves, basically. So he starts panicking. He goes out right away. We see the reason why none of them are there. It's because they're all chasing down a UMA. It's UMA color, Nick. Yeah, it's an appropriately goofy UMA for this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing too dangerous, uh, but that has enough ability that, you know, they have to actually chase after it. You know, if it were something like, oh, UMA fire, then this would be, like, kind of <laughs> taking a lot of attention away from what's going on, because a lot of the, these two chapters are about, like, Chikara and his decision after having bonded with the group. Uh, but fortunately, it's like, no, it's just a weird paint guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus, it's color in a manga that's black and white, so who cares? Yep. Like, like yep. you could just be like, no, this is what the world has yep. always looked like or will always look like if we kill it. Yep. Um, so they're chasing after it. Uh, I do love Fang. It's just like, I can kill this one, right? I've, I've been holding up this tension all this time. And he goes to punch it, and it turns into Rio. And for, like, Fang stops for a moment, and it gets away. And he's just like, why wasn't I able to punch it? It's like, oh. Because you've learned to care about your classmates over a year. No, I don't care about anyone. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Everyone sucks but me. Um, Nico's like, hey, like this thing's so fast. Why don't you call Chikara? His unboof could stop it. And Fuko's like, no, we took advantage of, Fuko of Chikara's life in the last loop. and kind of let him down this path. So it's up to us to protect him. We're not going to do this. Uh, no one is going to ruin my friend's blue skies. So, you know, she's doing this. They're having their big fight. But in the background, we can see Chikara is running after them. Which leads us to chapter 172. I managed to move. And the framing for this is that while Chikara is looking for everyone, the principal of the school is giving the graduation speech. And it's very thematic because it's... It's also talking about Chikara and what he's about to do in his life. The big decision he's got going on. Because he can see through the window what UMA color looks like. And he's like, that thing is fucking terrifying. Are you telling me that's what they've been fighting this whole time? Um, like, this is, this is wild. 
His friend Rio shows up. He's like, hey, what are you doing? You ran away, but I think we could still make it back if, you, if we get there in time. And Shikara's just like, I've always admired people like you, people who can move for the sake of others. And I think this is my moment that if I don't budge here and now, I'll never be able to move on. They've been helping me at every turn, not just me, but also you and my family. They've been making sure nobody got dragged into this mess of a tragedy meant for me. They're my dear friends and saviors. So he just disappears. And Ryu's is like, what the fuck? Where did my friend go? He was just here. And we find out the reason is because Sean has grabbed onto Shakara and turned him invisible. And he's just like, yeah, it sounds like Fuko's plan is to cut ties with you, plain and simple. But I want you to make that call. Now that you've seen the kind of thing we're fighting, what will you choose? Your current life or the organization? And Shakara just says, I choose. And we cut over to like the diploma part. Um, and then like mix that with the fight going on. So they're like announcing names and they, they get to Chakara's name, but they're not there because the fight in the hallway is like continuing on. They're like, ah, oh, we've almost got it. If we just stops right there and Chakara is there un unseen because of Sean, but with his camera using unmove on the monster and like, there we go. We can finally finish this thing. Um, some people say it escapes, like the core escapes, so color hasn't been killed and is removed from the universe. Um, but I don't know. It's a little hard to tell in my mind. Uh, but like, hey, cool. This all worked out. Fuko immediately is like, why did you come here? You shouldn't be over here. You got a big server. Like she's crying and really excited at the same time. Um, and they're just like, all right, well, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll move on or whatever the, you know, the president, uh, principal, uh, and he's just like, Hey, you know what? I've decided that I, I want to be here with all of you guys. This this is my focus. So they decide let's take a big group picture and they even get his friend Rio in there. Who's just like frozen. Yeah. It's like, I don't, happening? I don't understand. He's one of his things. He's like, I'm so scared. <laughs> and I was like. Mm, this is a little bit of a damper little thing but of course this is also full of great jokes fang who is, is trying to escape the picture no! is like no <laughs> and then we see the actual picture happen and he does just keep going he just crashes into the ceiling but then also a couple characters decide to photobomb from the ceiling like they just burst through in that moment yeah it's very silly um it's a very nice positive ending to this uh mostly pretty silly uh but also just nice you know relationship building arc but i do love that they had this very perfect opportunity just like oh we'll just make a cr clean break so rio's friend doesn't remember them chikara leaves his old life behind to join the organization and then he just shows up again. <laughs> they take the picture, and he's also in the picture. He's, uh, it's just, oh, what's happening? So yeah, it does feel like. So is this guy gonna be like around? Is like he... he keeps on sh he keeps on showing up. Yeah, and they, every time <laughs> Rio's not on screen, we're gonna ask, "Where is Rio? What's happening?" Uh, but in a much more like confused. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Rio? What, Where's Rio? What is he doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like the, I like this sequence. It's it's just nice to have. We already had you know a moment of like oh it's Chikara's like big moment to like step up and stuff, but it's nice that yeah in the first loop that we saw him in, he was kind of just forced into the situation and just kind of had to rise to the occasion. But this one he just you know fully chooses to be part of it instead. Uh, so it's a different step for him to take as a character. And also, I really do love the combo move that he falls off with Sean. Specifically that it's not that, uh, you know, Sean is touching him so that they're doing it. It's that he's carrying him on his shoulders for it. So <laughs> while he's got the camera posed, it's uh, just a great, uh, you know, set of stuff. But it also makes sense because it's like, oh, this way I can move Chikara around uh -huh. while his limbs are still locked. Uh, so it's a great combo thing. Yes. Um, I think we're going to do some cool things with that. Nick, I would love so, to say more, but we have such a big chapter to talk about. Maybe the biggest yeah. this year. We got to unmove on and talk about Boruto. And it is no longer 
Naruto Next Generations. No, no, no. It's the second part of the story, which means there is an entire new subtitle. This is like JoJo style part two. We are making a clean break here. As <laughs> original original Boruto is done. We should have done a retrospective on that series and given I our guess. final <laughs> thoughts on it because this is a whole new a whole new series. It's Boruto <laughs> Two Blue Vortex. Yes. I feel as now, though Nick, I'm, I, I can feel that you're you're sitting here saying I don't understand what that means and it sounds dumb. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you, you're right. <laughs> I don't know what it means, and it sounds dumb. And I, and the thing is, I don't know if we're ever going to like be given some plot detail that will even be like, oh, and that's the title, or anything like that. It feels like this might just be a, no, no, that's just the title. Come on. It would uh, be wild if they don't ever explain this at some point. Like, they're not like, because doesn't Boruto have blue eyes? So you can even be like, oh, his eyes are like Vortexes. Or maybe he gets Vortex eye powers or something. I don't, I don't know. But he's, miss he's missing one eye. So I don't, I don't oh, know, so. maybe the other eye is Kawaki's because they're brothers. Maybe. So we start this chapter off with neither Boruto nor Kawaki, but with Serata. Clack! Who is Clack! That is our introduction in this universe, because her ninja high heels have stepped onto the ground. And the he high heels have gotten a upgrade? A, a, a refitting. A refitting. Because now they have ankle warmers built into them. Um, so they're not just sandals, not just high heels, but also ankle warmer heel sandals. Uh -huh. And this very this greatly bothers me. Her new outfit. Why? Why, uh, why would this bother you, Nick? For, so first of all, what about this outfit is offensive to you? It's not offensive. It's just strange. So the most sensible part of it is that she has a belt. <laughs> I'm not sure if the belt is necessary, however, because I'm not sure if she's wearing shorts. Or if this is a romper that she's wearing. I thought... A, it, a I, sleeveless, strapless romper. I thought this was supposed to be one piece of an outfit. Like, it was just a top and bottom that was connected. Uh, but no, that would be if Nami was wearing it. Yeah. No, not not yeah, yeah, so. Uh But later on, she, like, jumps and, like, her jacket moves up. And I was like, oh, there's, it looks like there's supposed to be skin between it. So I'm really not sure. It, it does seem like, yeah, it's like a strapless top. And then a pair of shorts that are just disconnected. But, but tone-wise, they match perfectly. Yes. Uh, and she is also wearing a matching jacket uh -huh. that is a bit too comfy. <laughs> she, it's very relaxed. You know, you could definitely vibe in it. Um, I will say she has gone out of her way to match this jacket. It's a little tacky. Like, you don't want every yeah. piece of your outfit to match. Then it becomes mm. a little bit like, mm. It's like, just kind of like a uniform kind of thing yeah. instead of like, a, you know, your thing. That you... Like, so here's the thing. Either it is just casual clothes that she put together herself and she was desperately trying to color coordinate, like you say. Or this is her official ninja uniform and this is what she goes out in mission on missions wearing. Do you think there so, is an official ninja uniform, or do they think they're just like, eh, whatever, wear whatever you want? Well, the 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 Jonin wear the like green vests and yeah. have the blue uniforms, so I don't know. I don't. I've. I think it's always been a little bit nebulous as to whether like low ranking ninja have to supply their own clothes, and that's why. Oh, is this more. is this Boruto's jacket? That's what uh, I was about to say. Fanboy connoisseur. I, I know. It's Carino, uh, but that does look I like it is his jacket. jacket. So she that color matched the questions. rest of the outfit to the jacket. Hang on. So I do think I remember him wearing a jacket that was very much like this. You're right. So it's definitely very similar. I think that the it's the, the so the headband protector on the pocket is new. Is that because that's supposed to represent Boruto's headband protector? No, that's her. Because her, his was his has the cross through it. I okay. think that's just her stylish way of wearing it. 
Okay. It's so... like Roman Reigns coming to the ring with the belt around his, you know, the, the you know, it's facing on his back or whatever. It's just like this is his way of establishing his All right. style. Okay. So if we look at, I think that the, the, I think that is supposed to be Boruto's jacket. I think that that's correct. But that raises further questions. <laughs> so... As in, sh this is several years after the part one ended. How small is Sarada that she has grown <laughs> is still unable to and and still is swimming in a 12-year-old boy's jacket? Um, it, it, Which was form-fitting for him. <laughs> she's, so, she's, she's, she's so dainty, Nick. You just don't understand. She's, she's you know, made of porcelain. That's, uh, that's how precious she is. I but guess she's also a ninja. Even, she'll kick your ass. Yes, and I I have to say she's she's wearing high heel sandal with 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 ankle warmers and a jacket that she cannot possibly have full range of movement for her arms in. How is she doing ninja stuff in that? And you can't tell me she's no. This is just her casual clothes. She's got a thigh holster, so this is partially ninja gear. It has to be. Whoa, Nick! You're saying we can't wear thigh holsters as like regular yes. pieces of outfits? Okay, well, uh, my, <laughs> yes, I'm my saying. roommate Joe is going to have some issues with that because she loves to wear. It. Uh, look, I a lot has been made because this was like one of the first images that yes. came out when this series came out, which makes sense. It's also the first you know, page. Um, I don't think this design is horrendous. It's always going to carry an, like an, a, an inkling of ickiness because right. Ikiboto draws his female characters kind of uncomfortably at times. Um, but like, I do get it. It does feel like kind of K-pop in a way and almost like, one element that I kind of wish Boruto focused more on is like, look, if we're going to just say technology is really advanced, like reach that point where it's almost just cyberpunk, where you can just say like, hey, characters can wear whatever the fuck they want because like, you know, you're in like the future cyborg world or whatever. And you could just do that sort of stuff. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, that, that angle. There are weird elements all over the place, but I don't hate it as much as I worried I would. I mean, look, everyone got a different look for this series, and Sarai's is only the first. Uh, Boruto's is also pretty bad, I, I feel like, with his, you know, I'm a, I'm a ninja on the run, I've got no, I, I, I'm a ronin, I've got no kingdom, I've got no home that I belong to, which is why my ninja outfit from now on is going to be a three-piece suit. I'm going to look like I'm a John, in a John Woo movie constantly. It's why I'm just going to fucking have drip constantly. Just uh, Always. It's why I made sure my Riz was just so on point. You can't stop me. Yeah, that's right. I haven't I haven't had a proper sandwich in three days, but I did manage to stop by the Hot Topic and get five pieces of flair for this outfit. <laughs> oh my god. So here's my actual hang where my actual hangups for this chapter actually begin I, I, I we spent a little bit of time on Zerata there but that's nothing that's nothing here's the issue Serata of, after years of her friend being exiled from Konoha trying to help him her new plan is to just go to the Okaka and explain the situation <laughs> this this is very much like an in media res <laughs> That is like two years happened, but like you weren't there, so we'll explain what it was like for those two years. Because yeah, she's just like, no, I've explained this over and over, and I have no additional proof. Bring back Borto. Like Serato, what have you been doing, my girl? Like, have you just been like trying to get anyone to listen to you? And don't if if you you if that's a long enough time scale. It's like eventually you'd be like. Do a plan B. Try to do something else. Every week she shows up. It's like a Tuesday for Shikamaru. He's like, ah, Sarat is here again. I bet she's going to say the same thing. Wah, wah, wah. I've explained it. My, everyone's forgotten but me. Blah, blah, blah. Just be a dickhead, so, Shikamaru. That'll get her out of there. Yeah, so by the way, Shikamaru is the Hokage now, which I kind of have a problem with uh, because... It was established 
at the end of at the end of Naruto that there were all these different people who were like, "I'm gonna be Hokage, I'm gonna be Hokage," and he was like, "I'm going to be Naruto's advisor when he becomes Hokage because he's going to need someone to do that kind of stuff for him." He didn't want to become Hokage himself. Now he just is. Well, How he, did that happen? It would, because <laughs> it would make sense that the person that he's essentially the vice president to Naruto. And, like, in Naruto's absence, he just gets promoted. It doesn't seem like this is something he wants. When the third Hokage died, they literally left the village to find a replacement. So I, <laughs> I don't disagree. I think this is the cleanest and easiest answer. If you're going to say we are not focusing on that part of the story, like, you're going to say it is not relevant that they find a new Hokage. Because as we'll get to at the end of the chapter, there is no, like waiting time in this story there was not like a slow gradual reintroduction to this world they're right like boom code and boruto are back you know baby they here they are again so like if we're not going to focus on that then yeah sure just say shikamaru is the hokage it's the, the quickest and easiest way to do this so shikamaru is the hokage now and uh they point out like hey look you know you he tried to ki- he tried to kill Ho- the Hokage. He tried to kill Kawaki too. He can't go unpunished. And so I was like, "You're wrong. He didn't try to do that. Give him a chance to tell his side of things." And like, "Well, why did he try and run away then if he's guilty?" Also, we have Ada's Senrigan eyewitness testimony. Ada's. Why do you trust Ada? <laughs> Because so the big said, the bit the big brother experiment worked, Nick. Now granted it got canceled uh <laughs> two two percent into the experiment, but it two percent it worked. Uh, so Serata points up if someone ordered your death, you'd run away too. So let's just rescind the order and then he can actually, you know, present his side of the story. And Shikamaru says, Listen, the sanction against Boruto is not just in line with Konoha laws, it's the will of our people. Even if I lift my order, people will still say unconvinced. So everyone hates them, so it's, it's not going to be good if I lift the order, because, you know... You suck, Shikamaru. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've, uh, so this is why I never voted for you. <laughs> so, um, I guess it's Konohamaru, maybe? Yeah, it's Kono, I don't know. It's, it's Konohamaru is like the, the new Shikamaru. I can't recognize him without his headband. So uh, he he says, "Hey, stop mouthing off to the to the eighth Hokage." And Shikamaru's like, "I'm worried about you, Sarada. At this rate, forget Hokage. You'll never be more than Genin." It's like, and, and I, I like he like has to like end up being like, "We're not going to talk about this again." And it's like two years, and you're still talking about like if like. I, Maybe it's, maybe she's maybe it's not just like you know some teenage rebellion thing, guys. Maybe she's like really really certain about this. <laughs> or even if you're not, why are you still entertaining these meetings? Like, yes, <laughs> to, like, stop like, talking to her. Yeah, like all right, you know what? You're not a ninja anymore. Or if God forbid, like we need to have ninjas or whatever. Like you're a ninja, but stop coming to my fucking office. Right. If, like, she's still cons- insisting on this, then maybe, like, you should take some sort of action about it instead of just be like, oh, hey, I'm worried about you. And also, so I was like, oh, I get it. You're saying that it's not just uh, it's not just Boruto. It's also because my dad's a traitor, too. And, and Shikamaru's like, no, I'm talking about your future as a Kodoha Shinobi. All right. So Sarada says, once the seventh Hokage brought my dad back after he'd gone rogue and committed a lot of crimes. He became Hokage while he was still a Genin. My role model is Lord Seventh, not you. Take that, like, Shikamaru. You suck. No one loves you. Which admittedly, I was kind of like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Shikamaru. <laughs> it is weird. That is like an energy that I feel like, maybe it's just our podcast, but I feel like we've all gone from like, yeah, Shikamaru was really cool in Naruto. Probably one of the best characters. We're like, you yeah, fucking Shikamaru's a bitch. Fuck, am I? <laughs> he sucks. His, his face smells. Stupid hair. Yeah, you know, I guess Shikamaru had to, you know, steal his steal his good fortune from somebody. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we cut to Kawaki, who is t- hanging out inside his microscopic Q dimension place in order to check in on Naruto he, and Hinata. He, who he are just still hangs. Asleep. He just hangs out there sometimes. It's like, hey, what's going Which on, mom, and dad? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you can't say that you're not my mom and dad if you're unconscious, so that's pretty great. Uh, 
he looks mostly the same, honestly. His hair is just a little bit longer, and but, but it's, he's still got a mohawk. Uh, then, <laughs> this is so weird. So, obviously, the only other person who realizes that Boruto did not kill uh, or try to kill his Naruto and is actually Naruto's son, besides himself and Sarada, is Sumire. So she's still an important character. Don't know what she's going to do. Uh, but she's st- <laughs> I, for the life of me, could not tell you what the purpose of this character is. I truly, I, like, it's not even like I'm like, oh, she's like a friend for Serata. Because that's only recently has that been a yes. thing. She's been like a confidant for Serata. Like, I truly don't know where her place in all of this is. She brings up to Serata, like, look, I mean, from Shikamaru's perspective, we're the only two crazy ones and everyone else is sane. That's 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 how it is. Uh, and look, to them, it's not just like things are a little bit weird. It's like, no, no, no. Reality has shifted. So, uh, but so, and they also start filling in a little bit of plot holes just to be like, no, shut up. This premise works. Because Sarai says, oh yeah, early on, everyone started to sense some of the paradox, like how Kara have modified Kawaki's body. So, how did that happen if he was born and raised in, in the village? And what happened to Momoshiki? Even Miyasa Shikamaru hounded Kwaki about that. But that slowly dissipated over time thanks to omnipotence. So now no one has any doubts. Even though reality hasn't changed and the facts haven't changed, people have just people stopped stop being it. suspicious of those things. They Nick, just stopped. I, I would have had such an issue with this, but we live in modern day America and like facts, that has never stopped yeah, anybody from believing a story. Yeah, so literally everyone just been gaslit and it worked. Uh, we cut over to Ada and Damon as Serata and and Samira are still meeting with them. Damon looks even worse. Just he looks he's, he's he even. Got, he got floppy bunny ears in his little he's pajama obscene. top. Ada, I think, changed her clothes. Maybe she's like the one person who hasn't changed like at all in this time skip. I think her uh, hair got longer and her top has changed slightly. It's still the same like weird pants with like the stars and moons on it. I guess they're like, look, we had a great thing going here. Why are you? Why are you gonna change perfection? You know. So here's a weird thing. I don't know why this happens. Serata and Sumire. Tell Ada that they realize <laughs> that this change has happened and that they're the only two who have realized it. And Ada has to explain to them, look, I don't have control over my own omnipotence, so I can't reverse or anything like that. So you should, you should probably just like give up. And so I was like, I can't. Is there any new information? And Ada's just like, not really. It makes, my, it makes what someone's desire is real. So everyone's memory has changed. Everything they remember about Boruto and Kwaki got rewritten in the two switch positions. Can we reverse it? I don't know. Why? I don't know. (laughs) By the way, I find it weird that the two of you managed to retain your memories when you're not Otsutsuki. Both my omnipotence and charm have no effect on Otsutsuki, like they don't work on family members like Damon. You two aren't either of them. So how do you retain your true memories? And also... Are you affected by my charm? And Sumire flashes back to when Shikamaru told them that they should pretend to be under her charm. Which should not be necessary. And then Sumire is like, oh no, it's just like we've told you and over and over. We're just putting up a front to hide our feelings. No one can escape being charmed by you, right? She says with a blank kind of scared expression <laughs> with like someone sweat <laughs> running down her face <laughs> no i'm definitely in love with you <laughs> i've never not been not infatuated with you <sighs> oh. so, uh, also we get a, a, a you know a jojo moment because it's like oh if you if you let your secret be caught you could be in danger cut to damon jojo sounds <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it is like yeah i guess you're right Anyway, we cut to Kawaki again. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, all right, fair enough. This this scene literally only raises more questions in an attempt to answer them. Like, oh no, here's what you don't have to worry about. It's omnipotence. Nobody is putting the plot holes together. And then this like, well, why are they trusting Ada with this information? 
why are you pointing out why are they trusting Ada with this she, information? It's she crazy. She originally did approach them. I thought I thought she expressed a level of like regret before the the time skip. She Wait, did. So, like, I think that's why they're doing it. They're like, you're the only other person we can kind of talk to. You're also the person that caused it. So maybe they're just trying to get clues out of her. And um, again, two years after this has happened. Why yeah. have they had this conversation before? It, it's absolutely another situation that th this conversation should have happened years ago off screen. But they're like, you, you can't go back. So we're doing it now. You, 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 see, you see it now. So, Kawaki's hanging out, looking over a balcony, all dramatic, like, wind ruffling his hair and his, co and his coat. And Mitsuki is hanging up behind him, and he's like, hey, can you calm down? I can sense your bloodlust. And Mitsuki's like, Boruto wants to kill you. I'll kill him first. I'll protect you. I'll kill him. And Kawaki's like, yeah, all right, just please stop. Can you just, like, give me... I'm gonna get a restraining order against you. It's just, please stop. Get away from me. Uh, but then, gets, uh... Message from the search squad, the ever reliable search squad. They've sent something. They found claw marks outside the wall. So Kawaki <laughs> flies <laughs> off. It really can't be established how ridiculous this is. Like, I know they do it in Dragon Ball, and like, I don't know. I guess first come, first serve on it. It is very silly when Boruto characters just lift straight into the air and are like, goodbye. <laughs> I've got places <laughs> to be now. <laughs> So he says, Mitsuki, just stay right there. Flies off. Mitsuki stares after him and goes, you're the sun shining brightly upon my moon. Aren't you, Kawaki? Oh, because that's the thing that he said in his prequel chapter about Boruto, how he's the moon that reflects the sun and Boruto's the sun. But maybe he has doubts. Uh -huh. Just subconscious doubts. All right. Nick, if you're doing a slow build, this is the way to do it. You you set you set the seeds, you plant them, and you're like you're gonna give them a little water, a little time. You let them grow. I guess. I guess. Uh -huh. Anyway, Himawari's training. Her hair, her new hair looks stupid. So she goes to. She's sparring with with Chocho uh, and spar, spar, spar. Shuriken, wrecking ball, blah. No, Eventually. Nick, she's got a cool new preteen style. This is why Serata's outfit doesn't work. Because no one else looks like her. Like, this is the closest thing, and this still looks like a character, like a teenager from the 2000s. It doesn't look like the future at all. Like, I have seen, I went to girls in high school who dressed exactly like Inamari does here. Inamari looks fine in terms of her fashion. It's just that her hair looks dumb, I think. She looks. She looks too much like everyone else in the Hugo family now. <laughs> like her short hair was the only way to distinguish her from anyone. Uh, Chocho gets the better of her, slams her to the ground, uh, and it turns out that she could die. And Ino Jin, I want to say Ino and Shikamaru's kids. You, you you pulled a lot more out of that than I would have. So. They're watching and they're like, hey, that's the, you got yourself caught there. You shouldn't, you made a mistake, but your moves are actually looking pretty sharp. You're Kawaki's little sister, all right. Good job, Himawari. Uh, and, but, but they're like, hey, Himawari, why do you want to get so strong? Are you like a person, like with eyes and ears and a knowledge of the world around you? A, her parents were seemingly killed. B, her brother had an attempted murder put, put on him. And she just doesn't know which one it is because she thinks that Borto is Kwaki and vice versa. And C, she lives in a village of ninjas! What is wrong with you? <laughs> there are better ways to get to this, uh, the, uh, the notion. Because like the, the point is supposed to be that she's like, Oh, I actually kind of want to help out Boruto. Like, oh, maybe there's something there. Again, you're planting seeds. But again, the yes. way you ask is a very weird thing. Like, why do you want to get stronger? Like, I don't know, dude. Like, two years ago, some ninja fucked up my mom and dad and tried to kill my brother. Like, what do you What do you mean? Maybe, like, Inujin just, like, goes around and is just like, hey. Wait, is, isn't she? When did, when did, maybe Inujin's like, when did that get up there? What? That big, bright, glowing thing. What, the sun? 
Is that is that a thing? Yes, it's there every day. <laughs> like, is she not at the age now where she would just be becoming a ninja, like, again in? I think that she's 10 now, so she would be at least getting set for it. She'd be in, like, the Ninja Academy by this okay. point, I would think. Uh, so, yeah, it makes perfect sense for her to want to at least start practicing. And they were like, why do you want to get strong? Because she wants to be a ninja! <laughs> Come on! Uh, but yeah, this is actually like an important thing because yes, very importantly, the vase, the vase that got broken, the Kawaki <laughs> spent all that time fixing. He had like a kid, a, a type of connection for between him and Himawari before all this shit went down. So she's like, I kind of feel bad for Boruto, who thinks who she thinks is Kawaki. And so I have this feeling, and also I have this feeling that my dad is still out there somewhere. She, even though is still affected by all this, she actually believes that there is something wrong about this situation. She wants to do something about it. And it's like, that's nice that it's not just a freaking monolith of everyone being like, well, we gotta kill Boruto, obviously. <laughs> Kawaki shows up where the claw mark is. He uses his super gone thing to blow it up with his mind. And then they're like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's, oh hey, look. That's actually the dialogue boxes if you look at it. <laughs> Uh, he, he's like, hey, didn't you learn anything from when there was a claw mark hidden on Shikamaru? There's something hidden on your body. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Again, two years have passed. How is it not procedure that if you're like, oh, we saw a claw mark. After that, we're gonna go home. Everyone checks to make yeah, sure, yeah. sure there's not a claw mark on your back. Like, the most obvious spot. Like, yeah, you could very do, like, a very thorough strip shirt. It's like, maybe you got in my asshole. I gotta, I gotta check. But on his back, <laughs> the same spot. Like, shit, dude. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Kawaki is, like, communicating this with, with, with Shikamaru, and uh, they're trying to figure out what Code's up to and stuff. Uh, some guys on the street are talking, and it turns out, oh, he's also got a claw mark on his neck. Ah! So, a ten-tail... Claw Frieza. Gimp guy. Just say Gimp Frieza. We know. Gimp Frieza. We know what these dudes look like. Comes out, starts wrecking people. And they're like, "Oh my god!" Oh, and more of them come out. And Shikamaru is like, "Why attack now? After all this time, coat? Because he's on a quest for revenge." This, this moment <laughs> broke me in this chapter because I was going along with it. I was like, "Okay." time skip you establish what characters are you know you, you start you had to create your foundation and start building up and then immediately like actually codes invading right now and i'm like <laughs> what was the point of the time skip then why didn't you just have him attack tomorrow i i, I know the answer is because boruto had to get stronger but it's like <laughs> because we had to get shonen power-ups from training arcs and design changes. <laughs> but this is the most Mashima hero ass time skip thing that I have ever seen. Where it's, a, it's just so people get stronger. Nothing happened in the intervening time period. Conditions haven't changed. People haven't developed new thoughts on stuff. It's like you went to, it's like you were playing Breath of the Wild and you camped in a fireplace. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, this 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 is some straight up fucking video game shit. Like ah, the characters just need to get stronger, so this fight actually made sense. Ugh. So Kawaki comes in, starts fighting and, with And then with there was the a moment. I was like, maybe it's just the one. Maybe just no. the one came out, and it's like the nope. tease, the prelude, you know? The little calm no. before the start. No, hundreds it, of them. It's a Marvel movie invasion <laughs> of identical henchmen all showing up. So Kawaki's fighting them. Serata's fighting them. And the, more and more show up. And Serata's like, they can use each other like claw marks to travel between locations. So I guess they've never encountered these things before in the two years since then. So there's or there's no info this gets shared about them. Ko comes out of one of their backs, stares down Serata, and he's like, huh, nice to finally meet you. So Serata says, What do you want with Kanoha? And he's like, I'm looking for Boruto. He's oh, not here. He'll just he'll just he's just gonna show up and then he's gonna disappear. This is just code kind of establishing himself. Right, right. It's just just like this is what I look like now. Basically yeah. the same. <laughs> I, honestly, honestly, a little disappointing. I I could have gone I could have gone harder. I, I I feel like I let everybody down here. You were all expecting something really wacky because like that's what I look like originally. Maybe, but I, I maybe really... I should maybe I can I 
borrow that like jacket that's too big for me so it's coming off my one arm constantly can i do that is would that be would can that I, be like infringement on your can i borrow concept? can i borrow your earrings and hang them from my nose like i feel like i feel like my <laughs> face feels naked like i should have put four or five more accessories on. <laughs> i think i like it's like there's, there's, not, there's just not enough detail going on up here. It's like there's the Coco Chanel rule of like take one uh, accessory off before you leave. Then there's the code rule, which is like dunk your head into your accessory <laughs> bowl and whatever comes up yeah, after grind your like grind your face around it. <laughs> yeah, you, you make a, a boat uh, sound, and then you, you're like, I'm time to go out to the day. Oh, God. Uh, so, so I was like, Boruto's not here. He left three years ago. Three year time skip, not two. Sorry. So then he's like, I know. I've been looking after, chasing for him for like two years and I'm tired. Uh, and so I was like, well, go look somewhere else then. No, no, no. Let me rephrase. I've decided to stop looking. I was very that. frustrated during the really time skip. <laughs> now I'm not. I'm here now. <laughs> I thought I'd have his former friends toward whom he still cares about. That's not how you word that, but okay. I thought I'd have his former friends for whom he still cares about. Anyway, summon him. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I'm gonna... He goes real fucking, like, you. 90s villain. He's like, I, I hope, hope you scream real oh, yeah. pretty. I hope your pretty scream will reach... I was like, if he gets more gay in camp <laughs> with everything, like, alright, I'm on board. Because he did... This motherfucker did show up looking like Dracula. Like, he's already pretty firmly in gay camp territory. Yes. So. I am in full control of the situation. <laughs> shows up, doesn't kick him, shows up Stepping on Code's face. <laughs> Our villain, everyone. You suck, dude. Boruto says, stop that. That's creepy. <laughs> yeah. Boruto has shown up. He wanted to let everybody know he's uh, beaten a couple gyms in this region, so he has their badges. <laughs> what the hell's... Uh, so... Hey, I beat the uh, Sun Gym, the Long Thing Gym, the Sexagon Gym. <laughs> So a sensor guy's like, oh, Murta Chakra confirmed. He's infiltrated and he's around Code right now. And Shikamaru's like, prioritize confronting Code and his claw grimes. Just call them anything else. <laughs> There's got to be a better name for these guys. <laughs> claw grimes. And they're like, and also keep an eye on Boruto. Boruto has shown up. He stands between Serata and Code. And Nick, he's got the long awaited sword. return. It's been three years, not for us, it's been like four months. Um, right. and if you're just reading chapter by chapter, it'd be immediate, but it's right. been so long since Serata and Boruto see each other. Just look at the longing in her eyes, yeah, and uh, and how she's very pigeon toed right now. Uh, and how, uh, how Boruto doesn't care, he's like, actually, I'm more yeah. interested in everyone else in yeah, this everyone scene. else. Has not looked at her even once. Hasn't said, hey, Serata, sorry, or anything like that. He had to do his cool line about how uh, girls find it creepy when you say your pretty screams should drag your friend's tear or yeah. something like that. Everyone reading this, remember, this is how cool guys act. They claim to do something for a woman's benefit and then refuse to treat the woman as a person afterwards. So yeah, um, I literally don't know why we had to have a time skip that we waited months for <laughs> if this is what we came back to. It feels like things are less established for this now than they were before the series took a break. This is truly astounding and I can't believe that Boruto continues to top itself <laughs> in how bad narratively badly narratively structured it is. It's amazing. It really made me appreciate like those four months without it more. Like there was like I think we yeah. joked we're like oh you know once once it comes back we're gonna be like oh you kind of miss the old guy. Uh, but no, this was <laughs> this was bad. Like again, I was kind of into it. I was just like, all right, you know, we're establishing on your world. Like, I don't get why you had to, like, give yourself a new title and, like, you know, its own separate section in the, the, the website and everything like that. But you're like, hey, this is a new 
time this is a time skip things have changed establish the status quo and the status quo is just where we left last chapter but everyone's a little taller and that's kind of it like it, it's it's just it's the same shit immediately code and, and boruto show up you're like we didn't tease this out even a month no at all is that there's no new faction of any kind established or anything just yeah. nope here we are nothing like never nothing's changed like Nobody has shifted their opinion on anything. The closest we get is like, oh, um, I always forget his name, Rochi Maru's kid. Um, maybe he's got a little doubt in his heart because he's like, this isn't mm. my son or whatever. Um, but that's about it. But again, you could have like built that out a little bit where I feel like the answer is going to be he's going to be like, you know what? I'm seeing this guy over here with the cool jack. I think that guy might be the son of my moon or whatever. Yeah. Yep. It. <sighs> It's bad. That's that's bad. what the thing is. It's, it's bad. bad. That's we the have, word. We have three chapters of Chainsaw. Three man. chapters of Chainsaw Man. Chapter one hundred thirty nine. A chair's feelings. What a title. Uh, so, the Sword Devil has shown up, or the Sword Man has shown up to confront Denji, and he's like, "Hey, when you fought Makima, there was a pretty strong sword wielder who was there too. That was me." And then he's like, "Okay, it's a long story, but that wasn't actually me who fought that battle." <laughs> So, there's an awkward pause. And then he says, I gotta go to school and just leaves. <laughs> but the sword man is also there. Miri Sugo has joined as a transferee. And uh, so they're like, oh my god, he's so handsome. And Miri Sugo is like, I'm not here to make friends. So don't talk to me. Girls are like, oh my god, he's a loner. Immediately surround him. He turns to Denji and is like, get rid of them, Denji! And Denji's like, Fuck you. Fuck you being surrounded by girls. Um, the girl whose name I haven't memorized yet that uh, that has been sent after him uh, is using Denji as a chair, which is a thing that, you know, he does for money. Uh, and so he's like, I'm here as a messenger from the Chainsaw Man Church. The weapons walk with the Chainsaw Man Church. Join us, Denji. We're a community of people like you, people who can turn into devils. Most of the church's top brass are weapons, and they're promising you a pretty high position if you join. Uh, and uh, so, the girl says, well, if it's the Chainsaw Man Church, you should make him the leader. And he's like, yeah, she makes a good point. And it's like, no, no, this is a good offer. You know, you get lots of money to spend. Uh, I go to the arcade and I eat steak every day, and it's like, steak every day? Like, well, yeah, wouldn't you get tired of steak if you ate it every day, though? Like, if you ate sushi every day, though, I would never get tired. <laughs> and I want to just they talk about food that they like for an entire page. This is what food I would eat if I had to have every day. And eventually, uh, um, uh, Miri is like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? <laughs> Look, you'll have fame, money, power, women. So much women. Tr trust me, women. Women. Also, you should join the public safety. I'll protect you and stuff from everyone and denji says butts feel good chairs are content in their own way too so very weird <laughs> but he's like look i just wanted to have a normal life i'm happy with that that was my dream to have i'm not going to go to the chainsaw man church so, so miri's like well forget it then i want to be your friend denji because you're the one who killed makima and freed me because he was under the control devil's power makes sense it's too bad, though. If you came with me, you could sleep with all the women you want to. So Denji goes, yeah. somehow manages to beat him down the stairs and tries to pose all <laughs> it's, coolly. It's the best part is you can actually see there is like a small little detail of like the door opening and like a little zip sound effect. Like it, it was really like a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon of him be like, boop. Mm, well, tell me more about your church. Uh, I've given it a lot of thought, and uh, yeah, I was a tool, so yes, yeah, sign me up for the Chainsaw Man Church, because he just wants to be able to meet with see, see a lot of women. The Chainsaw Man Church, as it turns out, is very tacky. It's just a big building that has a, a Chainsaw Man head on it. It's chapter 140. Scales as we begin things off. So, yeah, it's, it's great, right? This building used to belong to a cult, and we killed them all. <laughs> because we're so great. Uh, and they're just like, yeah, 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 where are these girls I can sleep with? <laughs> They're not even in the building yet. So they're like, all right, we got to give you a tour first. This very nervous looking guy shows up and he's like, I'm Nobana Higashiyama. I'm going to give you the tour. Denji observes as they walk around the building that it's 
pretty much all students. And it's like, yeah, the church is run by young people. The adults' mental faculties are diminished because of an American ultraviolet ray weapon in Japan's air. Okay. Uh, and Miri's like, yeah, America sucks. And Denji <laughs> says, you fucking kidding me? <laughs> doesn't believe any of this shit they start reciting these weird conspiracy theories and stuff he's like yeah chase a man's devil powers give him supervision that's how we found out about it he's like what are you talking about hey there's a wedding chapel a chainsaw man wedding chapel just a chapel that has a really weird statue of denji and chainsaw man form at the head of it all right uh and so then nibana says yeah in the next room over denji you'll have sex with a girl can't even say it so then she's like, oh, really? Yeah, and then you'll marry her in the chapel and join the Chainsaw Man shirts. Says, what? No, I'm not going to marry her. What are you talking about? So uh, the Chainsaw Man church, we encourage student marriages because the current system of getting married if you become an adult was brought over from America. Chainsaw Man saw it for what it really is, a system for controlling Japanese people as slaves. Marrying as students and then raising the resulting children in the Chainsaw Man church is the most natural <clears throat> marriage system. And Mary's like, yeah, America sucks. And Denji has the best reaction I can remember in a long time, which is, you like sex of crap! <laughs> I, want, I want to have sex, but I don't want to get married! I never found no American ultra-violent whatever, neither! <laughs> what? What, you didn't? No! Alright, maybe we lie about some, maybe we embellish certain things, but it's true that the Chainsaw Man Church has saved people. Well, yeah, this doesn't make it okay for you to force kids to get married, though. Well, you came with me without a second thought. Without a second thought, I thought this through logically and with boobs on my mind. <laughs> so, Nobana just like, come on, guys, just stop fighting. Look, let's go to the Chainsaw Man bathroom. <laughs> but uh, a hand lands on his shoulder. Someone else shows up and sends him off. And uh, Mira's like, yeah, come on, talk some sense to this guy. I brought him like you asked me to. And it's a tall guy with a ponytail named Barum. And uh, he says, it's been a long time since we've seen each other, so I'm told. But since neither of us remember each other here, uh, he introduces himself. Uh, and then before Denji can really react, he just kind of stares at him. He instead flips two fingers up and sticks them up Denji's nose. That never explains this. It just does it. He did what he wanted to do, Nick. What do you want from him? Um, then she's like, I'll F you up. He's like, well, if you did that, the Chainsaw Man might come save me. I wonder why he hasn't been fighting devils lately. What do you think would bring Chainsaw Man back? Would he come back if a big bad devil tore up Tokyo? And then she's like, well, Tokyo's gonna be fine, because it's got devil hunters, and there's also Asa. Oh, you know Asa! Are you friends? Shut up. calls Asa a cute, dumb girl, which is mean. But then he, when Deji doesn't react, he says, does that mean that killing Asa Mitaka will bring Chainsaw Man back? Oh. I don't know if these guys are good, Quinn. <laughs> I'm starting to think that the weapon devils might be bad people. Might be bad people. He says, look, picture weighing the following on a pair of scales. On the right side, place, friends, family, a peaceful, wonderful everyday life, and your pet cats and dogs. The left side, just one thing. The starter that transforms you into Chainsaw Man. Which side is heavier? And uh, Denji gets freaked out by this, pulls away from the guy, and is like, I gotta get out of here, and he just is gone. And uh, Bar Barham says, as the chapter ends, enjoy your normal life while you can. That's right. Denji is friend to all animals, including that cat right there. Hello, Professor Peanuts. Chapter 141, Normal Life Plus. Get a few pages of uh, Denji and, and Nayuta going grocery shopping together. It's very cute. There's some Chainsaw Man curry buns. Mm -hmm. They're half okay. price, though, because he's not as half popular price. anymore. But that's, like, a great deal for them. They're, like, pumped. Yeah. They're, like, half off yeah. curry buns. Hell, yeah. Uh, a devil shows up in the middle of the street, and he briefly reacts and starts to reach towards himself and then realizes, like, oh, all right, I, sh I, I shouldn't do this. Anyway, devil hunters show up almost immediately, kill the devil, so everything's taken care of. Denji walks off in a sulk, but they spend some time at, uh, at home, spending time with the dogs, watching TV, having a bath, 
or I guess Denji, are you get are you bathing yourself or are you cleaning the dog? You he's, shouldn't do both at the same he's time. He's bathing himself and the dog. Nick, you have to save Don't do that water. No, I, that's bad, Dad. Nick, Nick, I'm gonna guarantee you right now. Denji, when he takes a bath, bathes all of the dogs. This is not a one dog thing. He every dog, the other one's wet. He bathes each dog at the same time, and then is like, and then I bathe myself. <laughs> Goes, goes, uh, gets in the bed and is like, why is there all this hair here? Yeah, didn't, wasn't there like a whole thing where Asa was like, I smell like dogs. You smell like dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because he yeah, fucking I, bathes I explains with dogs. Why. Yeah. Uh, goes Even to sleep. Even when he's clean, a, he smells like a dog. They go to sleep. It's a big cuddle pile with Asa and Nayuta and all the dogs. And Meowy. Meowy's also there, yeah. curled up. Very cute. Just like this but, uh, cat right here. That's right. Uh, Denji is still depressed. Looks at a Chainsaw Man poster. Uh, Nayuta kind of is like stirred by him moving around and, and is like, well, we can't sleep. And then she asks, like, what's going to happen to me from here on out? After I like, graduate from high school, get a job, am I going to be happier than I am now? And Nayuta's like, are you unhappy? Mirror help with some Denji. I'll, I'll stay with you. And then you'll be happy too, because I'm, I'm just that cute. And then she falls asleep and Denji gives her a big hug and yeah. goes back to bed. It's very, very sweet. Mm uh hmm. -huh. Anyway, the uh, the Chainsaw Man Church weapon, uh, uh, devil weapons are uh, are uh, <laughs> they're at Family Burger. <laughs> I don't see Kobeni anywhere, so <laughs> we haven't. You know what, Nick? The scene hasn't ended yet. She could be anywhere. That's she true. could be right around the corner. Uh, so Barum says, "Like, look, tomorrow's the Chainsaw Man Church's day of worship. The followers won't <laughs> hunt any devils that appear, but the civilian and public safety devil hunters will come crawling out like cockroaches if we keep killing them." Chase a man's sense of justice will bring over, and he'll arrive to defeat the devils. Uh, Miri says, "Hey, why go this far to draw him out? Tell me." And it's like, "Well, tomorrow we're weapons, so don't worry about it." Well, I'm a human, though. Let me think about it. And Barham says, "He's right. We're humans. We're also weapons and devils too. Do you know what these three things have in common?" And there's a woman with sunglasses who says. They're all hard to spell. No. <laughs> I do like that this dude who's like all meticulous and evil is just sur every other person seems to also be dumb around him. Right. <laughs> They're humans, weapons, and devils were all born to kill. And that's why God will forgive us no matter how many people we kill tomorrow. Nick, I actually gonna... like how I actually dig how fucking evil this guy is. Um, this guy uh, apparently is the flamethrower devil uh, who was present in the big weapon devil fight uh, with Machina. Sure. Um, you wouldn't expect a guy who's, you know, a flamethrower devil to be this like this in terms of how Usually, he thinks about things. Yeah, like a hothead. Things. And, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm. it's... It's nice that we've got like some personality developing on like, hey, these guys that Denji's gonna have to deal with, presumably, might not be Denji who's dealing with them, uh, given that we've got you know some other uh, people established who could kick ass too. Uh -huh. But uh, that's our three chapters. Uh, <laughs> I love how much of an asshole Barum is and how much of a dumbass Miri is. So that's it. Yes, it's very funny. I'm trying to think right now, but I can't because Professor Peanuts just keeps climbing on me. So I'm just going to note, uh, funny, funny, extra funny with cheese. Yes. I, I do love that GB. Like, you guys are all full of crap! <laughs> um, Haiju number eight, Hoshina and Kaiju number ten are trying to deal with the fully upgraded version, which I think is number eleven. And number ten is just sort of like, hey, you don't want to quit, right? I've got my fists, you've got your blades. So until we draw our last breath, let's do what we love and have some fun. And Hoshina, something clicks at him, and he's like, wait, have fun? Uh, the kaiju goes after him with his sword, and Hoshina manages to just block it with, like, the shards of his blades. And he's like, why is it that even though I lose and lose, I never stop swinging? And uh, he just remembers all the times he was told to give up, and he just kept on going, never stopped fighting. And he's like, well, I did to be my brother. Kaiju never does like, no! Well, to hold on to one thing I've got going for me. No! To fulfill my duties as vice captain. Quit trying to put up a front! 
and he thinks back to when he was a little brother, a little kid, training with his brother, charging ahead, big smile on his face with his kendo sword. And he says, "Because swinging the sword is fun." And number ten gets up and he says, "That's right. You don't want to give up. You don't want to let go because you find it fun." And uh, within his mind palace. Kaiju number 10 starts to get swole and big and huge uh -huh. as the unleashed combat potential of the number 10 suit starts to increase and increase and increase and you realize like we never had it go for, for the 83% before and of course we did. Our core values have never aligned. That being said because it's fun that's it. That's so damn simple minded. I sound like a carbon copy of you but hey one of the pods comes open he pulls the blade in it out as the image of number 10 looms up behind him. His mouth is split open as he's gathering and drawing upon more of its power. And uh, as uh, the unleashed combat power is now 97% and rising, it gets all the way up to 100%. And Oshina warns number 10 saying, it's going to adapt to us in our current state too. So we've got only one chance. The next time we screw up, we're dead for sure. We're going to have us some fun. And he goes to draw his sword as he goes full release with his numbers weapon. It's very, very nice. Yeah. I like this chapter. This chapter rules. Uh, I gave my chapter of the week for last week. Uh, Ninja wanted a check and, and like cement things in. Um, and it's just really fun. Like the characters are capturing a cool feeling. Like it, it felt like we were going to get in for like a, another long dramatic flashback. Um, and we kind of get that a little bit, but like the two answers here is like, it's fun fighting and being like over the top and just like going all out. Like this is fucking fun. And even though you're like the super serious dude, you find it fun too. I know you do. So I thought that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, we've got some Eden Zero to talk uh, about. We got two chapters of Eden Zero. They flow together pretty well, so this shouldn't take too, too long. Chapter 252, Game Start. So, last time, it was uh, one of the Joker Helixes was on board the Eden Zero itself. And like, uh-oh, this is real bad. What are we going to do? And they note, like, hey, we should get on the ship. Um, but Rebecca is going to be the only one who can get close to her. She's the only person who has this, this ability to, like, defy time. Everyone else is going to get frozen immediately. Uh, there's a joke... Uh, that Cheeky's like, we'll just wormhole up there. And why is this like, ah, oh, you're using gravity to do all this. And like, it basically is like, so a character can like say a bunch of mumbo jumbo and then another character can be like, oh, you mean like warp? But it's also like, not how Shiki's like, didn't he just steal Nero's power, which was the warp? Like, it, it, there's nothing gravity related to it, I didn't think. Um, Weiss demands to go as well. Old man Weiss, I should clarify. Because he's like, look, this is my person. I have to, you know, I have to clean up my mess, essentially. So they teleport onto the hangar, and immediately Shiki and, and Wise are frozen. And the Joker Helix is like, ah, it's good to see you, but play a game with me, Rebecca. Let's, you've always loved video games. So boom, she's teleported in. And we get, for like a couple pages, a good idea. Because she's. A, it's, it's great while this lasts, yes. Yeah. She's in pixel art. This basically looks like kind of like a, an RPG maker kind of like style uh, like game where she's just kind of moving around and there's like reactions and then boom. Yeah, like you don't even get Joker here. So you get like a sh like a, a, a like it cuts to another scene so you can get a full body shot because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. And then, yeah, she's just like being chased um, and like a little RPG menu pops up. <laughs> And, you know, she gets all, you know, she transforms. And we even get, like, a pixelated version of her little kick move. And then that breaks her out of it. And the pixelation stops. We just get yeah. heroes, regular shitty art. And she's like, ah, I'm not pixelated anymore. And then she just gets teleported into a new game, a racing game. It looks exactly the same as their current thing. They race yeah. for a while. She's like, what? Missiles? What kind of racing game is this? I'm like, I can think of a lot of racing games that have missiles. Yeah. Honestly, it's harder to think of racing games that don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then they're in a fighting game. Again, it just looks like they're regular shit. Like, 
it, it, they took like a really cool idea of like changing the art style to re- art style to replicate the game and just didn't want to do it with any of the other <laughs> games. I don't know. I don't know, Quinn. I can't think of any famous fighting games that would have a particular art style that would look different from Heroes Normal style. That's true. Well, I guess you could say that uh, Joker looks like like Mortal Kombat like two and three like female ninjas because it is essentially the same outfit that they wore, just a bodysuit. Right, right. And a mask. Curves, yeah, and a mask. Um. It's all bad, but then Rebecca's like, wait, what's going to happen? And then Cheeky just kicks his way in. He's just like, boom, I'm here now. Um, what, I, I, it was time. But Wyatt's is like, no, remember? It's not frozen. It's just super slow. And I had a device set to, you know, basically regulate our time and get us back into the same thing. It just took time to activate. So now we're going to play Joker Helix, and he activates his his, his re- reinvention magic because they're inside of a video game to be like ah we're characters in an rpg party there's one kind of good joke where he's like time to defeat the demon king and cheeky's like i am the demon king (laughs) i don't know what what you're going for with this (laughs) i know in most uh pieces of fiction the demon king is the person you're trying to be but i am the demon king so yeah that doesn't work here uh which gets us to chapter 253 stage one it's a big showdown nothing really happens there's a bunch of bad action uh as they're like we have to use our magic effects or you know what actually it doesn't matter we can just use whatever we want we're in a video game <laughs> um but the joker helix that's there is like i won't let you beat the game i want to play for I- ever and they're like oh but i thought you were about you know trying to get the mother ether she's like a different me will obtain the mother ether and uh, we see Pino is yeah. It's not a, it's not inconsistent. It's not inconsistent. Come on, guys. Yeah. So they're like, hey, one of them is approaching from the sewers. Uh, young Wise like uses like slams his hand into the ground and creates like a cannon under like in the sewer to blow her up. And they're like, oh, I guess you could always do that. I don't know. It's another one of those things where I'm like, I don't really know what the joke here is. Like. If, you're, if the joke is about the consistency of Weiss's powers, there is no consistency. Right. Why would I <laughs> I feel anything about this? Um, they summon a giant cat. This is also stupid. I forgot how annoying this chapter is to me. This is noise. <laughs> this is just fucking noise that you're reading and you're going through. And then it ends. Rebecca is like chained to a chair because now it's like, oh, now it's like a horror game. And also I'm a hero and I'm... I'm into bondage and whatnot. So yeah, yeah so she's got to, she's got to do an escape game thing. With, yeah, you no, know, one of the, like one of those really weird point and click ones where like where it, where to take yourself out of it. And uh, yep, yep. So she figures it out because the puzzle's very easy. I do like that touch because a lot of those games were kind of like it's only easy because she figures out the answer immediately because she's like, "There's a code I could reach behind me." And there's only one thing that's like in that same sequence in this room and it's giving me numbers. So I'm just going to assume that's the answer. Yeah. Uh, And she gets out, but she's like, all right, I'm going to save everybody. Uh, And that's the chapter. Um, But this, this sucks ass. This sucks so much ass because one, this chapter's just noise. Like this, the, 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 the premise of like, Hey, we're in this video game. First and foremost was already done. They did digitalist. That was also a video game world. There's so, an entire story arc about that. It doesn't mean anything here, too. We don't really have that much of a knowledge of Joker Helix. So it's not like this is like a threatening showdown with a new antagonist. Every detail we get is like brand new introduced to us. Um, but the thing that sucks is like, I kind of feel like I know how we're going to go. Like, Rebecca is going to fight Joker Helix a little bit more. And then she's going to say something like, you know what? It was always really fun playing with you when I was a kid. You gave me a lot of joy. And Joker Helix will be like, What? Oh, my programming. But then, like, she's still going to have to kill her. Like, she's not going to be completely right. turned. I got to kill her. And then they're going to be like, it's sad that Joker Helix had to die. Right. And I and, just uh, don't and before, give a shit. <laughs> and before she dies, her currently, you know, non face face, it's going to turn into like a, a humanoid pretty yeah, face. Yeah, she's very so she beautiful look, underneath. So that she can look sad when she's like fading away uh, oh, at the end God. of it. I hate even this compl- so much. The the first of these two chapters 
is kind of okay for the reasons that you pointed out of like, hey, there's this like thing where it's like a freaking over the top over top RPG style and it's suddenly very different and like the attacks take the form of like RPG cutscenes and stuff. And it's like, oh, it's nice. This, there's like a stylistic difference here to represent the different environment. And then it's like, oh, it's a racing game now for like three pages. And it's just hero style. Oh, now it's a fighting game in hero style. Now it's all again an RPG, but it's just the, all the same moves. They even say they even make a joke about how it's like, oh, it's fantasy RPG themed, but we can just use mechs and guns. So if it, it like it's when you can just do whatever it's it, it this doesn't feel special at all so and then you even skipped over the part where while Weiss and Shiki are separated from Rebecca and they're in a room filling up with water and they're gonna die Weiss just looks at Shiki and says by the way are you are you is Rebecca your girlfriend and he's like what are you talking about I was like oh you know and, 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 and Shiki's like I mean she's important to me but we're not really an official couple and it's just like because it, it means nothing. Because she's, they have her say a line. She's like, I can't hear what they're talking about. Oh well. And you're like, so what's the point? It's not as though Shiki is confronted with anything here. Nothing in his relationship. Nothing in this conversation is changing anybody or like making no, him feel it something. Doesn't. It's just noise. This whole chapter is so pointless. This is an exposition. It's exposition dialogue because. Shiki doesn't realize anything about his relationship with Rebecca. He's just like, I mean, we're going to have a couple or anything. It's not, he might as well just say, he might as well just be like, oh yeah, eventually we'll get together. Just not right now. Just, just like, this chapter was a tweet. It was a tweet where you're like, these are the games I grew up on. Aren't these cool? Like, I love video <laughs> games. That, and, and uh, like, I just don't give a shit. Like, there was nothing creatively done here. This was an entire waste of a premise that you've already kind of done once. And it's just like, I just don't, to know that it's going to end the same way that everything else does is what's frustrating. Like, I'm perfectly open. Maybe this will surprise me completely, but I am like dreading the next two chapters are just exactly as I laid out where it's like, no, we have to kill Joker Helix. But like, no, I loved you. I loved playing games with you. Feel bad that I'm dying now. It's like, it sucks. Kanebanashi, story 74, the Shikisai Festival. We get some kind of uh, wrap up in regards to the competition that Akane was was the runner up in. A conversation between, uh, oh God, I'm forgetting his name. So it's Gakuman is is the journalist, and then there is the guy who organized it, whose name suddenly escapes me at this moment. But uh, they're having a conversation about kind of the aftermath of it, and Gakuman brings up it's kind of weird that the only person you recommended for Tudats for Utatsume was the young man who went first. Can't even remember his name. Apparently, made that little of an impression on him, and he justifies it by saying. I can't recommend my own pupils. So, wasn't gonna be Hikari, no matter what. Uh, and also, breaking with custom to lift a second year student to Futatsume tends to draw disapproval from other folks. And we get this very brief flash of the Rakugo Federation, you know, other people who haven't really been introduced formally yet. Uh, so, he's, he essentially says, like, because the other two only came in second and third place, they're not exceptional for me to recommend for promotion. Getting to be a special exception is the privilege of the winner. Consistent logic. I, I, I get that. Like it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, and he's like, I think they both have the ability to make Futatsume and they'll do it sooner or later. Um, but uh, Gakuman thinks that this is still kind of weird coming from him because it's a bizarrely, in his words, conservative view. Uh, and uh, But then he's like, also starts kind of gushing a little bit about Akane's performance. He says... It reminded me of the style even a younger Isho couldn't inherit, inherit before he became the dominant figure he is today. For an instant, I thought I caught a glimpse of the art of Shinoji. A Rakugoka like her will truly will bring back unruly times to the Arakawa school, I think. But feel free to ignore me, since I'm just an outsider. And uh, he very, he does a very like classy exit, puts on his fedora. <laughs> 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 He's just stick. It's like, all right. Um, I feel like we're going to see this guy more in the future. Um, like we've gotten, we got too much focus on him during this tournament and afterwards for him to not show up again. It feels like, yeah. Um, 
But uh, on his way out, he's also told, like, hey, if you're in a festive mood, you should go to the Usaka Tinmangu Shrine tomorrow. The Shigama School is having a festival. And we see that Akane is helping out to prepare for that festival. She is there with Guriko, and uh, and she's like, oh, what, I, there's all these people. I didn't, I had no idea that there was going to be such a huge festival because she was part of the school last year, but she was participating in the athletics day at her high school. So she was busy on that day, and that's where we're only getting this now. Uh, so, uh, Guriko gives her a bit of history about it, as in, like, this air, this festival is, comes from Shikama's nickname, Tenjin Cho. Uh, a lot of his longtime fans would refer to him as that, and so this is actually, like, a collaboration from, like, the local area, without, like, the local area. She looks around at stuff, like, setting up carts and everything, and she gets this kind of, like, wistful look in her eyes for a second, and then Guriko says, hey, tomorrow's the festival. So here's the thing. As apprentices of Master Shigemo, we've got to make this festival a hit. And so Akane's like, yeah, so we'll perform Rakugo for them. No, 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 no. What is it that makes a Japanese festival come alive? Food stands. So we're opening a classic yakisoba stand tomorrow. You chop the cabbage! Uh, and then Koguma shows up, and Akane's like, oh my god, thank god you're here. Guriko says we're going to do a yakisoba stand. I know. It's outrageous. Yakisoba sucks. <laughs> So, there are bitter rivals every year setting up their own food stands. Koguma is going to do candied apples, and Kyoji is doing yakitori with the people from the restaurant that uh, he sent uh, Akane to to help out at, that he also has a bond with. Uh, and he has this weird, badass introduction pose where he says, They call me yakitori Kyoji. This is very weird. We're, it's a different manga all of a sudden. And uh, my caro, he's not doing a food stand. He's doing an entertain entertainer stand. And uh, so Akane looks at it over everything, and she's like, she remembers what my caro told her about how, hey, if you're going to be an entertainer, you should try and master different forms of entertainment, not just be a good Raku Koka. And so she's like, all right, do it. If I'm going to participate in this weirdness, we're going to play to win. And uh, that's where we start off. The next chapter is, hey, there's a festival. Akane is helping out with the Akitori stand. And, uh, she, you know, she's, she's like, chopped it up and is helping out and everything. And she's like, can I do this next? No! You've never been to this festival before. It's before peak hour, so I can handle the stand on my own. Go and enjoy the sights for a little bit first. So, hey, she gets to go around and, you know, she, like, runs into Koguma. He's, he's got nerves right now because he, you know, I can relate. Uh, he's had too many interactions with people today and, uh, is, is overwhelmed by it. Fortunately, Hakushu... One of the other Zizens that she's met uh, is, is, is shows up and he's like, oh, it's okay, I'll take care of this. And he takes out some hair gel and a comb and does Koguma's hair so that he's basically in Rakugoka mode and that helps him out. Kyoji is getting really intense and he actually faints because he was given a brandy-flavored chocolate and he, he can't handle alcohol so much that that knocks him out. My Kara was entertaining people because, you know, he does that. Shigama's there in... Uh, in the loincloth, uh -huh. with his tight old man ass in the breeze. Good for you. And he tells Akane, tighten up your loincloth. And Akane, like, you know, you know, like defensively covers herself. He's like, excuse me? No, no! Emotionally tighten your loincloth. If you want to lighten up and empty your head, you need the right mindset. So go on. Be empty-headed. Tighten the loincloth of your heart! Thanks, Master Shigama. This that is a good tough. lesson, Nick. We should all be tightening our loincloths a little bit more. Around our hearts, yes. Uh -huh. uh, but she is like on this track of like, this is work. It's a contest to get the most sales. And the whole point of a contest is to win. And she remembers, you know, the disappointment of losing the last competition that she was in. But then she looks around at everyone just walking around and enjoying the festival. And she's like, I think I'm being stupid. So she takes a deep breath and she lets the thoughts of like, you know, people being disappointed in her crying after she lost just kind of flow out of her. She breathes out. She goes back to the Yakitori stand and she's like, hey, uh, Anisan, I want to I'm going to try something out. And she basically does a Rakugoka style sales pitch and she just 
rattles off this really long detailed thing about like oh this is how great this is all these ingredients smell the noodles and that you're gonna sit you're gonna savor the umami and all this stuff and when they're gone they're gone so step up and have a taste and Amelia Krause starts drawing in and Gurika right, realized like hey so what happened what changed you look totally different than before you left and Akane says I just tightened my loincloth a little what the fuck are you what? talking about? <laughs> oh, all right, let's do it. Ah, cooking, yeah. And uh, we zoom in on a sign as they get into that to see that, yes, as part of the festival, they will be doing a Rakugo performance, and Akane is first up on the list, which makes sense. She's the only Zenza in the school. So this is a, this is a nice uh, start to what looks like a little bit of a breather uh, series of chapters. Akane had a big competition that did not go well for her, she needs a little bit of time to kind of reset. And this was a really nice way of approaching that while also still acknowledging the aftermath of what happened from there. Yeah, we had to narratively reset as well. Uh, and I think it's cool that we'll have uh, a little rock go with basically zero stakes. There's nothing in yeah. this, you know. And more than that, I think it's going to be nice to see all of her, like, I don't know what the term you would say, but like her, her classmates basically right. also performing Pers and like not an intentionally competitive way. Like this is a pretty light event. So it'll be a way to just get to see presumably all of them with a little bit of like a snippet of what they're like. Yeah. Um, I do wonder if we'll get to see some people perform that we haven't really gotten to see previously. Cause I can't even remember if we've ever actually seen Guriko perform even. If no, we have, we've never seen time. him. They, uh, you know, I'll be curious if they use this as an opportunity because this, I think, will be Akane's first time seeing Mykeru perform. Yeah, who is like in, very talented. Um, and I have to assume that Shigama will perform as the main event. Too. Yeah, it'd be so, nice. I don't know if we're going to spend a ton of time on this, right, um, right, right. But it'd be nice to see like little snippets of what they're like. Yeah. Ba 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 blue box. Ba 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 blue box. A waste. Uh, big color pages for this. It's very nice, you know, just a bunch of main characters kind of gathered uh, while the sun is shining through the clouds. It's very cool looking. Uh, we kind of pick up from he on Hina's perspective from when, you know, Taiki told her that he's dating Jinatsu now, and she very quickly uh, excused herself. Was like, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, the badminton club, uh, and she is like, I got a 500 yen gift card to a sporting goods store. If anyone can beat me at vertical jumps, immediately Haru beats him at vertical jumps. Uh, Taiki tries to do it. He falls two centimeters short of what Haru did. There's a very cute moment where, uh, like, Hina walks by and, uh, and, uh, Taiki's like, ah, oh, Hina, avenge me. And so she's like, all right. I mean, the butterfly in my knee means that I'm good at flying. And Ayame just picks her up by the voice and lifts her up. <laughs> Uh, love that moment. And so she's like, all right, I gotta go. And, uh, she just, she's thinking to herself, yeah, this is fine. We can talk like friends like we did before. Everything's okay now. <laughs> Ayama realizes something's wrong. She says to Kyo, Kyo. Kyo. But, uh, hey, can you, like, hear her out about what she's going through? Because I feel like I, she, she, like, asked me to introduce her to a boy, so she might not be doing well. <laughs> um... And, but he kind of was saying like, you know, you're actually uh, he says uh, oh, no, what was it? Actually, this is I am talking. It's like, you're pretty good at looking after other people. I think it did help her. Uh, so Kyo does go to talk to her. Uh, just kind of like sits next to her while uh, they're and kind of like takes up station next to her and then uh, just kind of waits for her to engage and she does pretty shortly after he says, you know, you told me once that there was someone you liked. How did you get over her? And Kyo says, I mean, time. Uh, and so he was like, I mean, if enough time passes, those things going to go back to the way things were before. Like, I'm trying to get things to that point, but I'm worried about this is the right thing to do. Maybe I should actually distance myself from him, and I, maybe that would be better so I can, feel like, find the next person for me. And Kyo says, well, let's say I liked you. And, of course, Shimi is like, what? It was it hypothetically? If I got rejected... If I kept my distance, you'd lose a friend, but you'd be okay with it, is what you're saying. And uh, Pina doesn't really have a response for that. 
So he says, yeah, the girl I liked lived next door and we'd known each other for a long time. I always felt like I loved her, but she didn't feel the same way. And one time I saw her going home with some guy and she told me later that she'd gotten a boyfriend. And he says, yeah, I got angry at first, but eventually it got easier because Saki seemed happy. She had a look on her face I'd never seen before in all our years together. And it didn't matter how I felt when she had an expression like that. But even so, he looks sad. And he's like, there's no way that he could really deal with it. No, no single way. Uh, but, you know, I think that relationships dominated by love are a little lonely. As in their one-sided kind of thing. Taiki is still practicing vertical jumps. Eventually, he actually beats Haru's mark. And he, real she, you know, seeing this realizes he's being such a dummy. And it'd be a shame if I cut ties with him. In fact, because I got rejected, I can turn this love into a memory. And going forward, maybe we can be friends. And she approaches him and gives him like a victory sign and says, Hey, forgot to tell you before. Congrats on your first girlfriend. She gives him Aww. a smile. And I cute. like that. It's a very nice note. It's like she's maybe not completely over him. But she's at least got a chance of taking that step forward and is not going to let herself lose him as a friend. That's nice. Chapter 114, Challenger. Uh, do you have a goal right now? Says the narrator. I don't know who it's directed towards. Jinatsu hears, learns from her friends that uh, Saisho, uh, whom uh, you make a... a went over to one and they actually like be like the one of the front runners of the last year's tournament so like oh well yumika is going to be a threat to us which of course makes sense um and uh meanwhile ayame is at badminton with the badminton club she's doing like the hand weights and they're like what are you doing and she says well the first year tournament is coming up and i gotta look my best for bowl cut boy and it was like oh right she's into yusa i thought she was over him she's just no why else do you think I put up with cleaning up your guy's mess? <laughs> <laughs> so then they say straight up, all right, well, if someone from our club gets pitted against Yusa, who are you going to cheer for? And she does, to her credit, pause for a second. Uh -huh. And then she goes, eh, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> mm, the hot yeah. guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but hey, they bring up like, yeah, Yusa is a really strong competitor. Uh, you know, Taiki beat Haru, which had never happened before. So our front runners for nationals are definitely these guys, are Haru and Taiki, and they're having a practice match with each other. Uh, Haru wins it, and Taiki's like, "Come on, one more!" And Haru's like, "Look, I told you, you got in order to go to nationals, you have to beat me and Yusa. So if you can't win this tournament, you're in no position to even talk about competing in nationals. Keep that in mind while you're out there." And Taiki's like, yeah, I get that. I'm aware of my shortcomings. That's why I've got to win. Haru still is like, go, go, take my place. Goes and has a talk with Nishida, who asks how things are going. And he's like, hey, does Taiki still have the best shot at the top? And Haru says, out of the first, out of the students that his position, yes. In terms of ability-wise, yes. But there's more to it than that. I'm trying to figure out if it's bad for us to keep on having these practice matches because he's a challenger right now. He's in the challenger mindset, which means he's expecting to lose more often than other players do. I don't get the sense he considers himself strong. Then he draws a comparison between that and the tortoise, the story of the tortoise and the hare and says, Taiki's like, he, Taiki's a splendid tortoise, but in the real world, not all hares are lazy. Great if line. he wants to beat us, he might have to change into something that's not a tortoise. What a cool guy Haru is. That's such a great, great uh, meta evolution of that metaphor to bring uh -huh. up. Uh, so then we cut to like Taiki's at home later. He's watching his practice match back because I guess they're actually like, oh no, he's practicing his match. He's watching his match with Yusa, I think, maybe. Uh, but uh, he thinks to himself like, hey, if I can beat Yusa, I wonder if I'll be able to actually like feel like I can stand shoulder to shoulder with all those really talented people around me again. But at that moment, his thoughts are interrupted because he gets a call from Chinatsu, who is in the adjacent bedroom. <laughs> uh, so uh, she says, look, I heard you had a tournament tomorrow, and I was thinking I could cheer you on. Um, 
and she asks how he's feeling. He's like, eh, I'm confident. And she's like, yeah, I, I kind of sense the pause there. No. So she not to pause for a second and she says, hold out your hand in front of you and put it against the wall. And then on the other side of the wall, she puts her hand against the same wall. And Taiki's like, all right, I'm doing it. Yeah, you can stop. But why'd you make me do that? Gotta go to bed. Good luck. And uh, Taiki's not that big of a dummy. He, he, he thinks, like, I wonder if she was, like, sending me power through the wall. I feel like he's, he's starting to, start to figure. figure he's like, all right, I'm, I'm starting to pick up on her, her little, uh, her little gifts. Yeah. There's a great couple of chapters here uh, as we get, you know, a bit, a little bit of closure on Hina's end and, you know, some more hope for her after having a lot of heartbreak. And that's just kind of it for her recently. And then we get more into the sports side of things. And I really like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we got building up to this while not losing sight of the fact that, hey, we've gotten to know these characters and know what they're about and stuff and still keeping that in focus, too. This is really, really well done. Um, so good stuff. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Really, really good chapter. <sighs> Cypher Academy <laughs> Chapter 36 on a paper razor's edge. All right, what? Uh, huh. So, in order to get anonymity back from being captured, uh, fucking Iro has challenged the guard Hakanagi to a battle, wants his ally back. In anonymity is like, you fucking idiot. Uh, there's a really kind of awkward moment where they're like, we didn't establish that Hakanagi was the guard. I mean, you're right. Yeah, I, I can be the guard, sure. Uh, they hold out a test which has the letters T, T, and E on it. And, uh, they're oriented so that the E is between the T's and below them. And they look kind of like a face. So it's like, solve this. And... Iro has like, wait, you used ink on paper? You can't do this. You were told we were told you needed to use something from nature to create a code within 30 seconds. And so Hakanaga's like, I used my scythe to cut the grass and chopped it up and melted it into paper. Right when the game began. And we used blueberries for the ink. <laughs> I'm holding a scythe. <laughs> it's just like, alright, fair enough, man. So, Iroha thinks about stuff like, all right, so I got to think about this. And then he kind of gets some inspiration from the uh, girl who gave him the manacle code, which is like, you know, you think we can't see people if their faces aren't visible. A human is the one who sets the code. So he thinks about like, okay, what kind of logic is there in order to give this? To, and he also thinks about, you know, all these are essentially. And he realizes about halfway through his time, could it be heat? That's the key here. And anonymity sounds like, oh, bingo. They may have said they spent time making it, but we're only talking about approximately half an hour. So aside from drying and molding the paper, they also would have needed to heat it up. So heat will reveal it. But Hakanaga's like, all right, if that's what you think, here, have some wood to start a fire. You got 15, you got 10 seconds to do it. But Iro has got an idea. And he thinks, he, uh, during all this, he's like getting inspiration to thinking about memories from his classmates and stuff. And it's nice. And he starts licking the paper and uses his own body heat to start heating it up. And everyone's like, ah, oh, shit. Uh, and he's like, huh, yeah, the ink's made from blueberries. So it makes sense if you'd use fruit for the revealing liquid as well. The code is taste me together with the blueberries. That's the sentence. And it tastes like orange peels. So uh, Hakanaga kind of like takes the paper on her scythe, holds it over the flame, and it says taste me on it. So like, yep, you can remove the blindfold. So and enemy son goes free, and Iroha gets her out of there in the most ridiculous form possible, which is he just takes her chair while she's still tied to it and leaps out of the treehouse. Ties her up more, because he's but like... So she won't she, struggle. She, yeah, well, he's like, you need to be really still while this is happening. She's like, I was less tied up when I was a prisoner. Yeah, and there is a great. That's really nice because she because she starts up there like I don't like you. You're not my friend and stuff. I'm not gonna apologize to you. I, and I was like, oh, it's okay. I did what I like because I like you. Whatever. And so then he grips her. He's like, no, no, it's okay. So no, no, I like you too. You're my friend. <laughs> it's very funny. I, I've I've kind of grown to love anonymity. San at this point. 
Uh, Hakanaga very ob ominously says, I still tortured out a lot, a ton of lines I wanted to hear. So there seems to have been something that they got out of this whole development. Turns out Iroha set up a net uh, <laughs> in between everything. Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, it was some, the, actually the net that Toshisai was crawling under before. So he picked it up from there and set it up. Hey, continuity. Um there's a, a cute moment where they have to sneak by uh, Invalidates Yunaki Gurisu and uh, two people she's captured. And the way that Anamini Uzan shuts up Ira is by covering both his mouth and his word bubble. It's, that is it's great. Nice yeah, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get that. Yeah. So they have to decide, like, hey, do we avoid these guys or do we try and capture Yunaki Gurisu and get some someone on our side? What do we do there? So we do... Go then to the next chapter, chapter 37. Those who chase two rabbits are first-class privates with a truly bizarre color splash on here. Why is it so bizarre? Because what is that gold behind them? It's, uh, it's the, if you beat all of them in a Pokemon battle, that's the badge you get at the end. That's yeah, the badge. Yeah. So that's where Boruto got it from. Yeah, got it. you beat all of them, not in a code battle, in a being an annoying bitch battle, and they were like, get out of here. Give me, we'll give you the badge. Go away. Um, uh, we, I, I do yeah. like the focus on all the class leading privates. They look pretty cool when they're all like in the same area. Uh, it's good stuff. Love the visual elements. Um, the so we see very briefly like Yosai Mura and Toshisai and Yugata have all like gotten involved in some sort of like code competitions. We don't really see those in detail. The two prisoners get ex uh, get taken over to where the bear is waiting for them. They think that she's very cute and also a bear. Uh, I do. Then yeah. cute, 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 cute bear, 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 bear. bear Nick, bear. which one are you? Are you the one who's like cute, or are you the one who's like that's a bear? That's not a cute looking bear, in my opinion. It's too photorealistic. So you're yeah. like that's just a fucking bear. You're terrified. I've seen cute bears before, like real life cute bears. That's not a cute looking bear. Uh, even if it was wearing a little tracksuit like they were? She needs to be wearing like some sort of neck and neck ornaments. Like a, if she was wearing like a little tie or something like that. Uh, that yeah, or like a little, a little, little businessman. Gotta have a little hat. Oh, uh, okay. I see it. I see it now. It's not just about the bear wearing clothes. It gets gotta be the right kind of clothes and accessories. Uh, Yunaki Guisu senses that Iroha is like is nearby, and she says, "Class One C is the telepathy class. Mind reading, precognition, clairvoyance, and second sight. In other words, its goal is to turn those with ESP into cipher soldiers. That's why they have so many grade skippers. Okay, uh, it's a strange power that only children possess. All right, <laughs> there's a lot of lore being added." To the class where we only see one character from it <laughs> and uh yeah iroha comes out from behind a tree and is like all right you dumped all that on me even before i revealed myself okay so uh but she also senses like i sense the two of you lurking nearby before why'd you ignore your chance just a bit ago it was a trap where i planned to let the two of them go and attack you instead when you jumped out and iroha says no reason. I just thought that it'd be better if we sell things through a physical competition because he's not weighed down by his manacle. So she goes hand springing off and Iroha darts after her and they start do a gymnastics chase across the two pages. All right. <laughs> Floor routines, rings and stuff. Eventually Iroha does snatch her snail tail thing and Iroha's just after we're like so we good? <laughs> I did it. I did it. Yeah. Uh, and she admits, like, oh, look, I shackled you at the start, and you still got me, even though you're not in your best condition, so how could I not accept this? Uh, still, code battles allow us to supplement physical stamina with intelligence. So here's my question. The me here right now is, one, dead face. Two, bad head. Three, bedded age. Which one? And Iroha looks at her weird and she says, I'm something from nature too. So that's my puzzle. What about it? So Iroha I, uses... I love all these. Every character is like... It counts. Something from nature. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to do what I normally do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Iroha uh, uses ice cold reading, realizes that all the letters in the puzzle she gave him are from the letter from uh, A, B, D, E, and H. This is uh, the most wild shit in the world. Yeah. So, yeah, he that he's captured her because that's the difficult ratings of the gymnastics moves you showed me while escaping. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, ah, it's a choice made of those letters, which is only yeah. number two. Um, so he escorts her to prison and things. I mean, I'm probably the only one in the entire academy who would have the knowledge to actually solve that. Why would she prepare a question only I can solve? And he's and he says, hey, can we make some time to like talk later? And she says, yeah, sure. Uh, the game ends very suddenly. Uh -huh. At that point, we like never like had a time warning, uh, I think. Uh, so they're like, all right, all the teams gather in the center area. The slug team has captured two POWs, the snake team, none, and the frog team has captured one. So I was like, all right, yeah, it's actually a really close competition. We're going to announce the results. The continuous grade wide leader battle is class 1A, the class where no one was captured. And so we get a whole bunch of like, and analysis from like side characters like Yosai Mura's like they like oh we lost I, and also I can't believe like you got to end up like not doing anything even though Iroha worked really hard f to get a, her into this maybe she just had a hard time adapting uh, but she's trying to figure out like what happened with her and stuff and then we get a flashback to a conversation that Iroha had with anonymity when he decided that they were not going to try and kidnap and attack uh, the group they were escorting before. Because he brings up if the team whose members get captured the least ends up winning, because they never told us it was the one who gets the most captures, then I don't want to risk one of us getting captured. So we're just going to get back to base instead. Uh, and uh, he says, there are all sorts of different victories in war, but unless everyone's safe, neither victory nor being the great white leader means anything to me that's so fucking dorky and sweet i love his little fucking what a great little shonen moment yeah. it's good stuff and uh he so he gets you know everyone congratulating him stuff because he's the fucking grade wide leader of the academy now because his team won big two fate spread as ever as Half the characters on the team are happy, and Toshisai is, is like mm, too cool to celebrate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. Yogata's like I'm looking off in there. No, Himi's got a little bit of a smile. Man. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, smiling. So, yeah, I'm smiling nice. with my eyes, like your eyes are closed. Yep, yep. Uh, I really like this though. It's just very, very, very cute shonen thing, and uh, got some silly stuff in there as well. I like, I love it so. I like this one. I like this chapter a lot. I like the reveal that they're like, look, the winner of this is not who captured the most. It's the team who lost the most, who who didn't get captured the most, basically. Like, had no, you know, anything like that. And it does really align with what Aroha's whole philosophy and all this is. I think that's like a good aspect to capture. And like, it's just like, I do feel like there was a little bit of team bonding. I'm a little disappointed because it does feel like there's stuff I wish we got to see more of. Like it was like a big six person mm -hmm. event. And I feel like we focused on like two and a half characters of it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the rest of that's going to come up later and, you know, we'll, we'll have time to like dig into it. Um, but this was like a decent fun event. I really liked last chapter where Aroha just grabs anonymity son, like on the chair and is like, all right, let's just, let's just jump out of here. <laughs> It's very, very, very funny. Aurora is becoming a pretty cool character who I just uh, I enjoy his his straightforward bluntness. Yeah, and uh, it's it's nice to see that uh, you know anonymity son is much more of a welcome addition to like the supporting cast than I think could have been expected when she was just the emotionless asshole uh -huh. who cheated. So very good shonen thing, turning an enemy into an ally. There. All right, we are very low. New exorcist. We gotta go. I think we have to really jump through these. Chapter fourteen, start of the duel. It's the duel with Shiroha, uh, and Shiroha agrees that if she loses, then she'll do anything that she is capable of in punishment. New way establishes like, look, uh, there's a barrier around here. You can't kill your opponent. Your goal is to break your opponent's weapon. That's that's that you can do anything you want to, but don't fucking kill each other and don't go outside the limits of the battlefield. Calls for a start immediately. Shiroha goes on the attack. Uh, Gakuro barely manages to block it. He then skids through the ground with his sword. And Shiroha's like, yeah, look, 
I'm not taking any chances because I don't know what your hollow weapons ability is, which, you know, you unlocked right in front of me. So I know this <laughs> unlocked a special ability goes after him. Uh, Gakuro manages to dodge it. And then she just fucking punches him in the face. <laughs> he dodges the next one, sends him flying, uh, releases a ceiling art thing. But before she can fully unleash it, he blasts her with an attack. Uh, and with this like shockwave ability, uh, but she buys some space and then just cheesecakes him into the ground, just fully like s sits on his face to pin him down. And is like, now you can't move. Restraining chains release. It turns out this was all part of the plan. Uh, under Nui's instruction, he sits up, which he could do despite all of her weight being on his nose. Uh, and rah, goes to break the chains and she does something which is actually really it's cool. very just... amusing that she was like I've seen how you'll never possibly get up and be like I think everyone in this series is like super strong I don't know why like yeah. I don't think anyone's body weight was gonna really like one person was gonna keep him down no an 80 pound girl is <laughs> pressing down on me I'll never get her off uh, he goes to break the uh, chains that she, the sigils that she summoned, which will disrupt her ability and leave her vulnerable. And she puts her hand in the way of the sigils, and he pauses his attack. And she was like, "You're a kind person, and now you've lost your chance of winning." I hate that. So it's like, hey, she predicted what he would do because she's gotten to know him and knew that he would be too kind to actually try and hurt her. Good stuff. Yeah. Next chapter, fifteen. She all has rage. Uh, she summoned a bunch of, uh, crows as her shikigami. Apparently this is a family trait thing. Uh, she boops, uh, Gakuro. That's my official sound effect for this move because she slashes him, but he blocks it, but just gets knocked down through the floor uh, and is surrounded by darkness and says to one of the crows, bring me his hollow weapon. But a burst of darkness comes out and has beaten up the crow. And it's, and it turns out this is his actual ability. His unleashed weapon ability is to draw power from the shadows surrounding him. Okay, so, but that's useless, though, because these spirits don't come out at night, <laughs> I guess. Um, but, uh, if it, so the Shikigami still knock him into some rubble, and she's like, I'm going to break your hollow weapon now. Steps on his hand to start to break it. Remembers that what Gakuro had said, which was that I'm, I'm going to save you. She's, like, really pissed off about this, and is like, what, you think with this level of strength and resolve, you're going to save me? Never say that to me again. Uh, cut away from that moment. Uh, 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 peanut gallery talking about stuff. Uh, and then Gakura's like, Ah! Fujino's stepping on me because, right, we were fighting and she's mad at me because I wanted to save her. I have to apologize. But then he looks up and sees that Fujino is in pain. She's, she's even though she's angry, she's grimacing through it. So he grabs her by the ankle and so, and refuses to let go even when she hits him and is like, well, if you can fight, then get up. And if you can't fight, then just go to sleep. And Gakura says, I'm sorry for wavering. It's because you looked like you were suffering. More shadows pour into his weapon. And he stands up and says, I'll defeat you! And then all the shadows are gone because he's absorbed them all. Whoa! What? Uh... And uh, he goes to attack her, and then there's a wave of darkness that blasts through Shiroha's barrier, and he says, I won't flinch from the pain anymore! I'll defeat you and save you! First chapter of this I thought was actually pretty neat in terms of uh, how like their strategies and knowledge of each other played into it, but all the stuff on Gakura's and it's just kind of like, right, I have to be strong! Which is like, yeah, this is like the fifth chapter in a row. You've established that you need to be stronger. I get it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying real hard. Um, I do like that there's something to this. I, I don't quite know if I like that it, his weapon's special power is like, I absorb all shadows and are stronger, but I'm like, it's something. Um, it's something. So I, I, I am excited for that. Um... I don't know. I, I'm I'm torn in this place where I'm like, this is not very good. But I, I don't know. I'm also like, I kind of like this. I think she's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Like, I feel like yeah. her story has been well established and she's had a lot of grief. All she sees is that really cool, like, scarf that's choking her design. Yeah. Where I'm Which like, I think shit. is deliberate. Uh, yeah. Like a deliberate choice. It's absolutely so. intentional. And I'm like, shit, I want that. I want a scarf that looks like it's choking me. Quinn um, wants that drip. <laughs> that's a good fucking uh, accessory. 
Uh, so I like these elements. Kakuro is just such a fucking fuddy duddy character, yeah. though, that like. I wish he was more annoying and then I could like the chapter on an ironic level because I feel like right yeah. now I'm kind of close to enjoying it on an authentic level, but right. he's just such a nothing character that like I'm, I'm I'm holding myself back from being able to get there. Right. Don't be a nothing character, Gakuro. Be a pathetic character. Yeah. That's what we like about you, ironically. Start crying because your sword's really heavy. Like, oh! Talk about how your dad died. Come on. You haven't brought it up in like fucking like 13 chapters. It's wild. Tanaka Cinema, chapter 18, day two, last day. Not a confusing title at all. Uh, so anyway, Nagasa can't read the line. She doesn't know how to draw on, on the right experiences to do it. So Hajime basically ends the shoot that day. Nagasa does uh, really, not Nagasa, Karai's really disappointed in herself. Uh, but you know, she's just telling her like, "Hey, get some rest and everything." Everyone else is like, "We gotta leave it to him to, to you know control the situation, know that he decide that he knows what he's doing and stuff." He goes outside. Is like, "What do I do? I don't know how to be a director. How do I help Karai?" Karai is also outside, uh, and uh, she tries to run away from him, and he's like, "Don't run off by yourself at night." And Karai's like, "Oh, it's all my fault. I'm ruining the movie and everything." And Tajime is just like, look, I'm not angry. Let's talk about this. But in the la in that last scene, I'm home. That's your line. Nagisa was shy and withdrawn. Her mother's words put a curse on her. She's learned to act cheerful and confident even after her mother disappeared because she believed that if she did, her mother would come back. But that hope has been betrayed. Far away in Tokyo, her mother had made a new family. And in the falling rain, Nagisa decides to let go of her mother. And that connects to the last scene when she says, I'm home to Shimada. The word symbol, the line symbolizes her liberation from her mother. So if we can't figure out why you can say that, we got to find a solution. And Karai suddenly stops, and he just runs into her, bounces off. Which, okay. And Karai says, "Look, I can't say it." And we get a flashback. Turns out her mom is, you know, exactly what you would expect from this type of character. You know, she is she is a very very controlling a agent of her own child who has basically put all of her own dreams and pressed them onto Karai has turned Karai into a mannequin. And this is in the artwork symbolizing it. And she's like, look, I've just been playing the part of the actress my mother wants to see, so I don't think that I can actually embody someone being liberated from her mother. And so Hajime's like, all right, that's it. And he takes her by the shoulders and is like, that's it. The reality, she can't let things go that easily. That will be the Nagisa that you play. Don't be limited by what's in the script. I want to sh you to show what you're feeling now in front of the cameras. So she does the line, and she feels like, I've got to say it, I've got to say it. I can't do it, though. But then Beto says, welcome back. And she hesitates, and she says, I'm home. And it's, you know, like, not super convincing, because she doesn't really feel it. And Hajime's like, yeah, that's fine, though. I asked, you know, we, we could see that this is the way that the real Nagisa would behave here, that natural hesitation. And Karai's really just point like, but that vision you had, the acting, the line, they're different. And Hajime says, it's okay. The guy who wrote the script is satisfied with the ending. Which, of course, everyone still thinks he wrote the script. Yeah. But hey, Tanaka's happy with how everything unfolded. And they're like, yay, we did it. Finished the shoot. Karai is, you know, not super happy, but... You know, she helped her friends make the movie and they finished the shoot. She goes home and she's looking over the script and she's you know, got that contentment to her. Oh no, her mother has come back to Japan early! Ah! Le guests! So, we get to chapter 20, scene 19 rather, Rain in Shibuya! And so her mother says, oh, so you've secretly been filming your classmates' independent film. This is a lack of professionalism. You're neglecting your work. You're a proper actress. You can't be distracted by this. And she says, oh, I have not been neglecting my work. I've been doing all my shoots. I've been told I'm doing good work. It's been a good influence on me. Please, we've just got one more scene to shoot. Let me just finish it. And her mother's presence just starts to overwhelm her. And she says, do you have any idea how hard I've worked for this? You're trying to ruin everything. I did all this for you, Himeki. Was I wrong? Why don't you understand? And, oh dear, Karai's got a little bit of parental trauma from the pressure of an adult putting all their hopes and dreams on a young child. Yay! Anyway, they can't shoot the scene because it hasn't been raining anyway. But it's all right, everyone. The driver who's been taking Karai everywhere knows about the situation and goes to her friends this to tell them what's going character. on. This iconic They literally they have to have something like, you're a driver, aren't you? <laughs> like, like... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> fucking what's it? Hajime is like, oh yeah, I've seen driver. you open the door. <laughs> like otherwise, no one would know who this character is as a reader. Just, just looks at the guy, then looks at the car, looks at the license plate. It says Karai's car. Oh, <laughs> it's starting to come together. I'm starting to figure out who you are. All right. So, uh, on top of you know being caught out, uh, Karai's mother has like confiscated her phone, won't let her get in contact with them anymore. So they're like, "Well, what do we do? Are we not going to be able to finish the movie?" So Hajime tries to like you know brush it off with everyone's like, "It's okay. It's nobody's fault. We did our best as amateurs. You know, we did a great job." And then he has to like very quietly apologize to Tenmaki. He's like, "I'm sorry. I couldn't make this work." And Tenmaki says, "When you make movies, these things happen." It's not unusual to be let dead by your friends. He, he doesn't you say your had hopes yeah, in. He does sing. <laughs> and disappoint you in the end. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So days go by. Hajime looks at the bridge they were supposed to shoot the scene at and just like walks off in disappointment. Uh, Karai, meanwhile, is being escorted around by her mother uh, and an agent as well. And then it starts to rain outside. And Karai realizes that they're close to where they were supposed to shoot that scene. And so Karai says, I'm sorry, but I really want to make that girl happy. And she gets out of the car and runs off, races through the puddles, uh, gets all the way to the bridge. And uh, no one's there, of course. And she's like, well, of course. Why would it, people just like show up unannounced? But Hajime has spotted her, and he's with the entire rest of the crew. And they're like, I, I knew she'd be here. And so they're like, okay, well, you, we're, we got to do this real quick. We use, a, we use a pin mic in your clothes to record the sound and stuff. They've, they've got everything ready to go. And uh, Hajime just says, look, if the fan makes too much noise, we're just going to dub it later. Just do your thing. They are all just good to go. And so Kurai is on the bridge. She's doing the scene with B, with Bito. She thinks about her the pressure her mother put on her, but she also thinks about the promise she made to her as a little kid uh, and how upset her mother was when she was like, I can't be an actress. Uh. And Karai says, now I can say it. And she says, goodbye, mother. Well, tears roll down her cheeks and Hajime immediately is like, that's it. That's the shot we need. Did it in one take. And the, as just as the sun comes out and dissipates the rain, they say, that's a wrap. Have a big celebration together. And then we cut to later on, and they go to see the director, uh, director Yukio, so that he can be the first to see the movie. <sighs> so it feels like I just wrapped up about five chapters there in those two <laughs> uh, for the pace we were going through. This series is maybe ending next week. Like, <laughs> there's, there's a lot. Um, we don't know. There's nothing definite yet. We do know new series are coming soon. Uh, but as we'll be talking about when we get to Black Clover, there are some spots open in the magazine. So it's not entirely clear. Um, but it does seem very likely. Uh, I will say, yeah, we, we move very quickly and it kind of sucks. Cause I feel like the scene with Himiko, um, Karai. In, oh, sorry. What? Karai? Karai. Sorry. I don't, I, I'm just naming characters. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, a character from uh, Honkai star real life. Played. Uh, <laughs> Karai is, uh, that scene with her in the, in the, in the beach, where she she can't capture like the scene written version, so she needs to do one where she's she just can't escape her own trauma, and that's that's the take they're gonna use as like the finale of the movie. That I feel like it needed more time to really carry through how significant of an action that is, because it ch it changes the entire impression of the movie, which is fine. That that absolutely can happen. Sometimes you discover your story in the process of telling it. And I think that's fine. But I, it was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, I wish we could have gotten to see a little bit more build into that moment because it, it does feel like such a big deal. Um, and then this <laughs> chapter here is it's a nice feel good. Like, hey, you know, the rain, they, this thing that they established earlier that they had to wait for like authentic rain to actually come down. It's like cool that they do it. And like, oh, without saying anything to each other, they just both, you know, ran to it. It's very, very sweet. Um, yep. So good stuff. <sighs> Two chapters of the Elusive Samurai. The uh, first one is about new shonen techniques. They fight uh, uh, old Japanese they fight. historical characters. And they do. They succeed, but uh, it's a little hard. So then their leader fights a bunch of Japanese yeah, historical took, took, figures for them. 
Tokyuki does the Buddha Blade thing, but he does it on a whole army this time. Then Ayako is like, that Imagawa guy had a good idea strapping himself to his horse. I'm going to do something impossible and become a wrecking ball. And then Kojiro is like, and I can do my deflecting blade uh, jumping to the air spitty slash thing on anyone now. Cool. Chapter 123, how a noble fights. Uh, it's by being a douchebag. Uh, uh, you, defend <laughs> me. I won't even carry a weapon with me and I'll shoot all these guys with arrows. Wow, Akie is so cool. He's so cool. Cool, guys look at all these people he killed uh but oh he went after some troops and stuff and it turns out that uh, shiba and uesugi knew this was going to happen and uesugi's like i've got a lab to do stuff Wah -ha -ha. and that's the chapter it's not bad I, I, the second chapter i actually don't think is that bad like him showing off his ability of like i am so confident my little protectors will protect me because i have the utmost faith in them it does have like a certain angle of like this is cool in a very like weird shonen sense uh, I just, I'm still at the place where I just don't like this character, so I just yeah. don't care. I feel like we're in this weird part two of this series, and, like, everyone feels different. I just, I don't know, like, the vibe of the series just feels very off right now, and I can't quite place it. I get I get you, though. Yeah. All right. Black Clover! We have a chapter of Black Clover. This is page 360. That's actually all the chapters for this week, too, but Black Clover and One Piece were off this week. Um, but it looks like it's all over, Yammy. Uh, Morgan is saying that as he's activating another type of magic, because he has another type. He's like, ah, I was given another type of magic so I could wield both light and dark magic. My and God. he's like, I don't even need you anymore, Yami. That's how fucking strong I am. He gives a big slash. He's like, ah, I'm the strongest knight on my own. <laughs> <coughs> then he dies from coughing. <laughs> um master luscious is beating up yami uh yuri uh what's his name nick <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> he beats up you know and um smithers i don't remember this character's name but he's smithers he's like ah, oh, he really can't fight two at once this is bad and if he dies guy, yeah then like uh <laughs> the neverland spell ends and we'll all lose right. to luscious's magic luscious i'm sorry Master Luscious. There's like a cutout to a bunch of different scenes. I don't know if we're going to focus on any of them because one of them looks like the purple orca guy fighting somebody. And we're not, does, we're yes. not giving a fight for that. <laughs> so Master Luscious is like time to put an end to this world. Boom. It's not done yet. All the black bulls come out. The headquarters comes out. It's like a big, you know, anti-magic uh, teleportation thing. And they're like, we're just getting started, dumbass. And we see Yami who's an attack, but then uh, Achika and Nature Boy Rick Flair show up and they're like, we're going to protect you. And Asta shows up and he's like, hey, you know, were you losing or something? And he's like, in your dreams, because I'm the one who's going to take down that guy and become the Wizard King. They both say that. Uh, and then we get a little message. It's like, okay, things change. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Black Clover is now going to be moving to Jump Giga which means that it'll be on a much less consistent basis, but that'll be probably a lot better for Tabata Sensei's health. So that is where the series is going to be finished. Uh, as it comes for us, really, there's not actually that much that's relevant because the series is still going to be translated. It's still going to be brought out. Weekly show to jump. We'll still talk about in the show when the chapters come out. They're just going to be kind of irregular. However, this yes. is another series that I talked about that's going away. So Nick and I are going to try to figure out a way that I can yes. like, take over something because yes. Nick has uh, too much to have to talk about in a row. His poor voice. It's so my, fragile. My lips are so dry right now. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh this is, uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that they're taking, like, a permanent step to helping Tabata since they lighten his workload. Mm -hmm. um, and on a weird note, this means that the third longest-running series left in Shodan Jump is Mission Yuzakura Family. <laughs> this is it's such so a weird, weird. world. <laughs> oh, uh, God, yeah. it really is. We're reaching a point where me and Roboco has to be considered like a senior ma ma a series in the magazine. Yeah, it is. Uh, so that's that's it for the weekly chapters of Black Clover. This was just a very like Black Clover chapter. Just like, a bunch of fighting happened and the Black Bulls go, bah! and Yudo and Asa go, I'm going to be the Wizard King. It feels like. You could have just told me, like, there was a chapter, and at the end of it, they announced, they made this announcement, and I'd be like, okay, like, the details don't really have any bearing on me Yeah, whatsoever. this this is very much like a, hey, we got some stuff going on. They also tease, like, what 
like the fights are going to be in the future. So it's like, hey, we still have Noel versus Aesir, Yami versus Morgan. We just established that. Uh, obviously, Luci Lucius, Master Luscious, and Yasta, uh, As Yasta, uh, Asta, and you know, I guess that is like their couple That's names. Their ship Yasta. name, right? Yeah, Yasta. Uh, Yasta. Uh, but then the one that still bothered me is like, no, we are going to cut back. If you thought we forgot, we're not. Mario Leona versus Morris. Who will come out ahead? I was like, shit. I really didn't think that <laughs> was still something we were going to be cutting back to. Uh, but those are the big fights. So you know, cool stuff. Um, Tabata, I hope, is healthy and can take care of himself because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's scary to get really hurt from your just your job. Absolutely. Let's close on last week's chapter of One Piece, then. 1090, Kizaru. Uh, so, last time the Straw Hats were present while, uh, oh god, what's her name? The, Vir it's not Virgo, is it? What's her name? Which the one? Large, the oh, large. York. York, York. I uh, should take over One Piece just so you know, well know yeah, character names. But yeah. I'll just I'll just create new names basically. I'm just like so. Oh, you Morgan, would never do that. Organ Schmorgan shows up. Nick, you remember like, Organ Schmorgan, right? They remember. Uh, the, uh, I feel like I feel like there's only a twenty percent chance you just made that up. They're, <laughs> they're a member of the Blurple Dandies. That's they're, all right. They're, that's they're, 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 they're a pretty big villain group. <laughs> Uh, so Luffy gets on the, the horn and says, this is Monkey D. Luffy, the man who's going to be king of the pirates. <laughs> it's his full title. Uh, and he's like, we got Vegapunks to move. If you value York's life, move all your ships away from the shore. Uh, so they're like, well, what the hell is happening? Everyone's just kind of reacting to this. Uh, the council is like, Who, who's all alive in there? And Luffy's like, oh, well, there's some folks that are injured. They're like, Luffy, no, don't, <laughs> don't give them details. <laughs> Uh, so Robin has to explain to her, to her nephew, <laughs> her young, her, the young, her younger brother. <laughs> Information's a weapon. You don't give it to enemies. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Uh, so he's like, well, yeah, but they're going to move the ships now. And he's like, no, they won't. <laughs> uh, so this is what jupiter or saturn one of them he says, he says like there are three things we must retain york safety the punk records brain the power plant that creates the mother flame everything else is disposable j saturn garcia or garcia j saturn something like that i think it's saturn so uh some of the, the emeralds also reacted to this like it's not what, jupiter because that character's name was literally jew peter jew peter <laughs> right so they're like, what about you know Lucy's group and stuff? And Jay Garcia like, Saturn. I got it. Saturn Saturn says, Look, our top these are our top priorities. Human lives are nothing more than insects. They will always breed more to make up for any loss. Cool. He seems he seems nice. Uh York is is crying, is like, they're gonna blow up the island. <laughs> like you are. Um and uh I love Robin's it. Also, Nami yeah. smacks her in the head. And it's yeah. clearly on Robin's behalf. Like, well, don't you bring up the fucking tragedy that fucked up my girl. Like, fuck you. Yeah. I'll ruin your entire day. But the part I really love is Zoro is the one in the background who's like, no, don't. <laughs> like, that's our hostage. You're not allowed to hurt her. Like, You're allowed to beat her up. Don't kill her. <laughs> Zoro is so really the voice of reason when it comes to violence should not be the answer right now. Yeah. There's some nice inter inter uh, interplay between the Straw Hats. Chopper's checking on Robin to make sure that she's okay after, after that got brought up and stuff. And then there's just Luffy and Bonnie eating the food that's there. Uh, they also take stock of like uh, how some of the members of the Collective are seemingly dead, but Edison is still alive. But they are they are operating under these... Pythagoras, Nick! And Shaka, him too. Yeah, uh, they're fine. both supposedly dead at this point they're also um, robots so i mean death is yeah. a pretty nebulous right. term uh luchi is is uh, kind of taking stock, stock of the situation and and uh uh and then usopp's like what's that and he's like i'm talking to myself i oh, know that's not sorry that's not that's not usopp rob luchi is doing he's the one who's he's he's accounting for everybody and kind of yeah. processing stuff but he's supposedly just talking to himself but yeah uh Usopp gets in contact with the people in the basement, and they're, you know, they've been let out, they've been given food, and they're like, oh, thank God! Uh, they've also still got the Seraphim working for uh, on, on their side. 
And also, we established that they were put in bubble balls. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, they <laughs> they handled the, they handled the seraphim because <sighs> some of Hancock's blood influenced the Hancock seraphim somehow. I guess. So Luffy was like, "You're the only who can save him. Please do it." And, Han and the Hancock one was like, "Okay, all right." So yeah, uh, yeah. Um, more talking going on. York's like, "You're never going to get the, into the communication system because there's an encryption code on it, and my brain isn't synced to all of yours, so you won't get it from me." Uh, and uh, then uh, they just kind of keep on going. We're like, "All right, we're surrounded on all sides." There's a hundred ships of various sizes, uh, and uh, Sanji's simping over her. And uh, then uh, Vegapunk says to Nami, like, okay, you're the navigator, right? So Nami says, the log post hasn't recorded the signal, but we still have a steady needle from Wano that we can use, pointing northeast of here, which would be Elbaf. And Luffy and Usopp are like, oh my god, the oh Holy shit! shit! We're finally gonna get there! And they break out into a song together. When did they have time to rehearse this? Probably they've, every night. They have, they've probably oh, sung this many times before. They have, yeah, they have practiced this song they have, in preparation for today. The ship is currently inside the lab of face. So they're like, all right, we can reach and potentially get somewhere. We're, we could use the Vega Force One to fly over the Navy's blockade, maybe. Frankie's like, we're going to use the Sunny's Cuda Burst to fly even farther. If we fly a kilometer away, they won't be able to catch us. And Vega was like, all right, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that you, your ship could do that. It flies on cola. On cola! <laughs> uh, and uh, so, like, all right, but we need to deactivate the Frontier Dome. And York's like, and I'm not going to tell you the code. And so, but Vegapunk goes in with, you know, the remaining people in the collective who are like, let's crack this thing. And so they start to get to work on it. Um, and uh, they're like, all right, we've got to move the ship around. People start splitting off to go and do cover different parts of this. Uh, and, uh, they're like, all right, um, there's also some weird dialogue between Bonnie and Luffy and, uh, Bonnie. And so they're like, we don't have enough food on board. And Bonnie's like, yeah, we need all of it in a day. I suggest more pizzas. But Luffy says, Hey, cheese is enough. Sanji can make it into a pizza on his own. And Bonnie's like, he's pretty cool, huh? A good cook and a good fighter. And Luffy's like, why are you acting so cheerful all of a sudden? This is weird. I believe that everyone should act the exact same as the first moment I met them. He's also probably just like, why are you excited? Why are you not more excited about the che the pizza made entirely of cheese? That's the part where you should be excited about. Who cares about sex? Sex is stupid. <laughs> uh, she also says, like, I've decided I'm not going to kill a vegan punk anymore. So she's kind of, they say she's gotten over it. We'll mm -hmm. see. Uh, Lucci has made a transmission. Ah, so he wasn't just talking to himself. <laughs> He's still communicating with people outside. Kizaru has also gotten all this stuff, and he's like, oh, he talked a big game like he was in control, but it seems like they're actually trapped inside. Uh, and so they're like, well, the Frontier Dome's a laser defense system. You're light. Can you get inside? And Kizaru's like, yeah, I can, but a good friend of mine is defending Vegapunk below it. So they're like, all right, we'll go past him then. That's not very nice. Kizaru is weird, like many of the, the admirals are. So. I mean, we know, we know honestly not a ton about Kizaru, but we do know that he he and Sentamaru are friends. So Buddies. I do like that he's just like, no, you got to be a little bit honest with this. Like he yeah. he's the one lawful evil guy in a group of really really lawful just evil, evil characters. <laughs> well, they're all lawful evil, but he's lawful evil. They're lawful evil. Right. Uh, so he says, like, hey, you should know that when we attack, it's going to mean that a whole ton of sea beast weapons and pacifistas under Sentomari's command are going to start sinking ships, so there's going to be a heavy cost to this. Cesar's like, all right, well, where's the power plant? And uh, Kizar says, he sent all the information I wanted to know. Muchi, that is. Uh, prepare for battle. All the admirals that we established last time are shouting out orders and stuff. Uh, meanwhile, inside the lab of phase, Sky Island ground, Luffy's bouncing around. We Kizaru uses a sacred Yata mirror technique to bounce a laser beam through the laboratory, and Sentomaru realizes that he's coming. The pacifistas are given the order to eliminate hostile hostiles. 
Kizaru darts in and goes straight for Sentamaru, uh, and they engage each other in battle. And then uh, Luffy realizes that someone is here, someone strong, because Kizaru's light is coming up through the floor from below. So, we're there, yeah, he doesn't send a beam. He is the beam. He sends himself as a giant beam of light uh, there. And, yes. uh, it's very, very cool. Uh, they're in this state where there's a lot of different, like, locations to kind of keep track of, because there's, like, now, like, yeah. verticality to consider. Yeah. Um, but the Admirals are fucking terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like, at this point in the series, we fought multiple warlords. Luffy has taken down an entire emperor and another one has fallen. No one's fucking taken out an admiral. Now, I don't think that's to say, like, the admirals are strong or anything like that, but it is, like, an unprecedented thing in this manga to fuck with an admiral. They're almost always things you run from. So the idea that they might actually have to show down with one of these admirals does feel legitimately kind of terrifying to me, because yeah. that is not normally the MO. Normally, it's like, get the fuck out of here. It's one of the uh, levels left to actually escalate to at this point in the story. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here. I, I, I still don't know if we're going to get like a big one-on-one -on -one fight or anything like that, but I do think we're going to get more of a conflict than usually. Okay. That is going to do it for Weekly Manga Recap, everybody. What were your favorites this week, Quinn? Tell me. Uh, I'm going to give my favorite series to, I think it's going to go to, I'm between Cypher Academy and Blue Box. I think I'm the exact same way. I think I'm going to give it to Blue Box. I like this Cypher Academy, but I feel like I liked last week's a little bit more. Uh, whereas this Blue Box was very, very sweet and cute. And I like the, the sports analogy stuff and just the bit at the end. It's, it's nice. Um, and I'll, I'll very quickly answer that All Might is my character of the week. Uh, we're on the same page this week. I, I was definitely torn between Blue Box and Cypher Academy, but you reminded me of like the sports metaphor thing. I was like, yeah, that was really cool. So I'm just, I'm just going to go with that. that and yeah, it's got, it's, got, it's got to be All Might for, uh, just being really cool <laughs> this week. Uh, that will do it. What would the audience, uh, Say. The audience agreed with us on All Might, and then they picked Cypher Academy as their chapter of the week. So it was also a good chapter. Uh, actually, sorry, it's a, a tie between Cypher Academy and Akane Banashi. I had to scroll a little bit further to start seeing Akane Banashi votes, but yeah, tie between the two. Yeah. All right, everyone. Everyone yeah. really liked that tighten your loincloth line. They were like, "Ooh." <laughs> Guys, that's going to do it for Weekly Manga Recap. We'll return next week, hopefully, uh, for more manga discussion. If you want more Weekly Manga Recap, we're on weeklymangarecap.podbean.com, iTunes, Spotify, generally wherever podcasts can be listened to is where you can listen to the audio version of the show. The video version is going to be on youtube.com slash weeklymangarecap. Said view version also features an opening sequence that's been done for us by Wensley Dale Cheddar and Milo Jack Stillitz. Thank you guys for creating that for us. Uh, also, sometimes title cards by Steve Mann, whose artwork you can check out wherever boobs are allowed on the internet. Steve Mann Art. Check it out there. And uh, we also want to extend a, a thanks to everyone who supports the show in whatever way you do uh, on our Discord server, which you will find a link to wherever this uh, podcast gets posted. Uh, we have a great community that is uh, on there. You can use that to find the Google Doc maintained by Ninja x 3 i which keeps track of MVP and favorite series voting, series that we take as recommendations and what we've covered before, and just all sorts of history associated with the show as well. Uh, and if you want to do something like maybe on the financial end of things, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash weekly manga recap, where we also like to post bonus episodes whenever we manage to do so. Yes. All right. That's going to do it. Now, uh, yes. we will talk about show to show next week. Uh, yeah. I uh, had finished it, though, in preparation for this week. So I just asked before we started recording, I was like, okay, well, can you give me a heads up on what... Yes. Uh, Sadistic September is going to be so I can start reading it because I presumed it's going to be a decently long series. And it, it is. Uh, it's but decently long. The, the reaction I had when you sent it to me was to scream, God damn it, and slam my phone onto the table. So if you want some preparation for what we're getting into, that's, that's your teaser. Yeah. We'll do an official announcement next time when we're done with it. But trust me, 
someone's not going to like it. <laughs> and it's probably going to be both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, bye. <laughs>